University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. The retractable roof is closed today, so it's going to be loud for this NFC wild card matchup between the Atlanta Falcons and the Arizona Cardinals. And the fans anticipating the appearance of their heroes today, the Arizona Cardinals, and their quarterback is Kurt Warner. He's 37 years old. Some thought his career was finished. All he's done is had a record-breaking season, leading the Cardinals into the playoffs. And nearly 14 years his junior, his Atlanta counterpart, Matt Ryan, the rookie quarterback who's been sensational for the Falcons. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Arizona. Tom Hammond and Chris Collinsworth ready to kick off the NFL playoff season with two improbable teams, really. For this Cardinal franchise, it's been 60 seasons since they hosted a playoff game. They were the Chicago Cardinals then, back in 1947, when they played at Old Comiskey Park. But they are the champions of the NFC West, and Chris, they got to this point by having one of the best passing attacks in the league. Boy, do they ever. And Kurt Warner, you talked about the up and down career of Kurt Warner. Well, he is definitely on the upswing now, back in the Pro Bowl once again. But more importantly to him, back in the playoffs with one more chance to get another Super Bowl ring. And he certainly has some weapons. The acrobatic Larry Fitzgerald, who I think has some of the best hands in all of football. And Anquan Bolden, one of the toughest players at any position in all of football as well. You do know he's a wide receiver. One well, of the well you knew I was going to throw that in there, yeah. <laughs> Well, what about the Atlanta Falcons? They won only four games a year ago, and you know about all their troubles. Michael Vick, convicted, sent to prison. The next day, their coach, Bobby Petrino, left for Arkansas. But things started to turn around when they hired Mike Smith as their head coach. They signed unrestricted free agent Michael Turner, the running back, and then with the third pick in the draft out of Boston College, they selected Matt Ryan, who has been already in some polls rookie of the year. They like more balance in their attack. They like to get the running game going, too. Yeah, they certainly do. But this has really been the story of Matt Ryan. When you say the young man, one of the most successful rookie quarterbacks in the history of the National Football League, you talk to their coaches, they say he has an amazing grasp of the offense. Talk to the offensive linemen, and they say he's the reason we've given up so few sacks this season. But maybe another reason has been the play of Michael Turner, the outstanding running back. Nearly 1,700 yards rushing. He is so tough. He can bowl you over, and he can certainly run around you and come up with some big plays as well. Should be an exciting day here today. Yeah, a lot of offensive fireworks. In fact, uh, as Atlanta takes on Arizona, we're expecting a shootout in the desert. Commit everything you've got for four more weeks. If you're willing to do it, the sky's the limit. Tampa, one goal, one game at a time. The pace is going to be a little bit faster and be intense. It's fun to play in. I think everybody understands that the tempo picks up more. And if you think that was fast, here comes the playoffs. NBC's NFL Wild Card Playoff is brought to you by Campbell's Select Harvest Soups. Real ingredients, real taste. Spanish audio provided by Telemundo. Today's game is presented in high definition by Vizio, America's HD company. To learn more, go to Vizio.com. NBC Sports, home of Super Bowl 43 welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Back at University of Phoenix Stadium for this NFC wild card matchup between the Falcons and the Cardinals. And joining us on the sideline today, a man that knows all about being on the field during the playoffs, former New York Giant Tiki Barber. Welcome, Tiki. Good afternoon, guys. The University of Phoenix Stadium here in Arizona is one of the most unique in the National Football League because its field rolls out to the parking lot. Just last week, they stripped it, resodded it, and let it bake, and then they roll it back in for game time. Now, this is one of the most popular fields in the National Football League with the players because it's it's perfectly flat and extremely fast, and players love that. Also, Tom, you, you mentioned earlier that the roof is closed, and I was told that the roof is closed because the Cardinals want to amplify all of this crowd noise. And we can attest that it's pretty loud in here today. That's Mike Smith, who is in his first season as the head coach of the Falcons, and Ken Wesnant of the Cardinals in his second year. Had their teams in the playoffs, and there's young Matt Ryan who will be 
taking the field after his older counterpart Kurt Warner because Cardinals won the toss and will receive. So Mike Kanan is set to kick it off to Arrington and Morey. Bouncing around finally picked up by Arrington. And Arrington will be twisted down at about the 12 yard line by Thomas Takud as we meet the starting lineup for the Arizona offense. Cool. University of Northern Iowa. Benjamin Jay, the U. Antoine Bolden, Florida State University. Larry Fitzgerald Jr., University of Pittsburgh. Stephen Breston, Will and Hills. Stephen Spock, Fresno State. Mike Gandy, Notre Dame. Reggie Wells, Clarence University. Lyle Senlin, University of Texas. Deuce Latui, USC. Levi Brown, Penn State. And the Cardinals with Kirk Warner start from their own 12 yard line. Warner now backs away from center and got the playoff under pressure threw it for Fitzgerald who nearly made it a one handed grab as we meet the starting lineup for the Falcons on defense. John Abraham South Carolina Grady Jackson Knoxville College Jonathan Babineau. Ow. Chauncey Davis, Florida State. Coy Wire, Stanford. Curtis Lofton, Oklahoma. Keith Brooking, Georgia Tech. Dominique Foxworth, Maryland. Lawyer Malloy, University of Washington. <laughs> Eric Coleman, Washington State. Chris Houston, University of Arkansas. So second and ten now for the Cardinals. Arrington in motion. Here's Warner. Hit as he released, and it comes up short. He was hit just as he let the ball go and incomplete. Well, it looked like Kurt Warner took a shot just as he was letting go of this one and that was Keith Brooking coming around the edge there on a blitz. They know that they cannot allow Kurt Warner to just sit back comfortably in this pocket and pick him apart. But the Atlanta Falcons not a big pressure team really but I think they're going to change gears a little bit today and try and get some heat on them. So here's third down and ten deep in their own end. Warner in the shotgun. Throws it underneath. And it'll be short of the first down. So the Cardinals big high powered offense sputtering on the first possession as Ben Patrick stopped short of the first and Mike Smith's defense has held. And a punting situation. You just have to wonder who may be more nervous in this situation Kurt Warner who maybe this is his last shot at this you know getting a chance to go through the playoffs and get another ring or Matt Ryan who's saying oh, I'll probably do this for the next 15 years. Ben Graham in punt formation sends it toward Harry Douglas. High punt Douglas finally fields it just in front of the 30 yard line. Cuts to the sideline and a nice return out of bounds in Arizona territory. Knocked out of bounds by Kelly Campbell. It's a 50 yard punt return 21 though as we meet the Atlanta starting offense. Matt Ryan, Boston College. Michael Turner, Northern Illinois. Ovi Maley, the Wake Forest University. Roddy White, Alabama Birmingham. Michael Jenkins. The Ohio State University. Justin Peel, Oregon. Todd Weiner, Kansas State. Justin Blaylock, Texas. At all. Todd McClure, LSU. Harvey Dahl, Nevada. Tyson Claiborne, Wake Forest. Good field position for the Falcons as they begin, and they are a potent first quarter, first half team. Play action fake, and Ryan rolling to his right. He's going to tuck it under and slide down at the 45 yard line. He got about three yards on the play as we meet the defense for the Arizona Cardinals. Antonio Smith, Oklahoma State. Brian Robinson, Fresno State University. Darnell Dockett, FSU. Bertrand Berry, Notre Dame. Chike O'Keefe, West Lafayette Red Devils. Gerald Hayes, Patterson, New Jersey. We head. Carlos Dansby, Woodland High School. Rod Hood, Auburn University. Adrian Wilson, North Carolina State University. Antro Roll, the U. Dominique Rice Kermarty, Tennessee State. Here's a second down run by Turner his first carry of the game the man who led the NFL in carries with 376 in the regular season but tackled by Carlos Dansby after a short gain Dansby the leading tackler for the Cardinals and really no big mystery to this game Michael Turner the guy who is going to be the key 
can this Arizona Cardinals defense that has had some good days stopping the run against the Giants against the Cowboys hold up because they certainly have had some pretty tough days trying to stop the run as well. Norwood replaces Turner here on third and six. Low snap Ryan fielded it and fires across the middle it's intercepted. Intercepted by Ralph Brown of the Cardinals. So a turnover by the Falcons on their first possession. Well, maybe I just got my question answered about who's more nervous because this really wasn't that tough of a read. We saw Matt Ryan. Typically, he looks straight down the field and doesn't tip his hand. That time, he stared down the receiver and paid a price. Check, Check this out. With this controller, your character will mimic your exact motions. See? Sweet. Now throw me a pitch, just like we're outside. Want to get away? Now you can. With Southwest Airlines Internet Specials, you can fly to destinations nationwide for just $49 to $99. Purchased by January 19th. Low fares, no hidden fees. Well, that time the veteran got the better of the rookie. Ralph Brown, nine years in the league, right here, is just going to run underneath this route. He sees the inside guy clear down the field, and he knows what's coming next. He understands the combination routes, flips his head around, and Matt Ryan throws it right to him. That was a nervous-looking throw to me because one of the great things we've seen out of Matt Ryan this year, he doesn't tip his hand. He did there. There's a running play to Andrew and James, and the veteran James crosses the 40-yard line. Tackled then by Lofton. Well, for Edger and James, this has been a bit of a tough season. He was so excited about the possibility of passing some of the great names in running back history. This season, he had a chance to go by Marcus Allen, Marshall Falk, Jim Brown, but he has been an afterthought in this offense. That was until last week when he had 100 yards rushing. Now here he is back in the starting lineup again. His 57th career 100-yard game. Second and four. Draw play. James again. First down for the Cardinals as he pounds into Falcon territory to the 48 yard line. Oddly enough, uh, Arizona working here on the ground with James. But you know what? We're seeing the veteran step up. Edger and James, how many playoff games has he played in in his career? Certainly settled in. And probably the greater motivation for him is he wants out of here. He thinks they don't run the football enough around here. He says, I'm tired of being a pass blocker. I want to go somewhere where I can run the football a little bit. Well, maybe today he gets the chance. 15 yards, as you see, on his first two carries. And he's given the Cardinals a first down. Why not? Try it again. Edger and James with his third straight carry. It looks like they're challenging the Falcons to stop the run. That one gained six. Boy, that was a heavy run right there. Edgerin was telling me that he really this offseason spent so much time getting his body ready for the pounding he thought he was going to take. But he was essentially benched early in the season and really didn't get much of a chance. But one of the things that has happened out of this, obviously he is fresher than he has ever been at this point in the season. And maybe they're going to work him in here today. Well, as you saw, extremely rare to see them run the football three straight times. Throw it back on the flea flicker play. Warner for the end zone for Fitzgerald. Touchdown. What a catch in traffic. This kid is sick. Edger and James run after run after run come right back to the flea flicker. And I'm telling you, this is an ordinary catch for Larry Fitzgerald. You could not have better coverage than the Atlanta Falcons had on this play. They were not fooled. Lori Malloy was right there. Chris Houston was there. But this is what they want from Kurt Warner. Throw the ball up and let Fitzgerald have a chance. He is remarkable. Neil Rockers to attempt the point after. It's up and it's good. Well, the Falcons had both Lawyer Malloy and Chris Houston bracketing Fitzgerald, but he went up to get it a 42 yard touchdown catch. Larry Fitzgerald on the receiving end of the flea flicker pass from Warner, and the Cardinals take the lead. 
Larry Fitzgerald with one of his circus catches to put the Cardinals on top and it was no accident he makes catches like that. Look at this before the game today. He's practicing those one handed grab before the game from Kurt Warner. Wow. Looks like Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean he does that all the time. He grew up idolizing Chris Carter. He would watch Chris Carter in practice because his father was a sports writer in Minnesota. Rackers with a kickoff. Norwood fields it halfway through the end zone and takes an E for the touchback. So the Falcons will begin from their 20 when we return down 7 0. When a nation demanded answers, no one has pinned anything on you. One man. He was doing the wrong thing and knew it. I know nothing. Took on the wrath of a president. We're going to make him choke. Give Richard Nixon the trial he never had. I don't think the truth will ever come out. Corruption. Hush money. Dishonesty. We're going to have to ambush him. We're not going to let that happen. Shut it down. This is just madness. I will ruin you when I die. I shall come and make you with everything I've got. Frost Nixon. Let it all. Now playing. If you look in. Watch the Biggest Loser Family's finale. And starting this Tuesday. You are the heaviest contestant we have ever weighed in. A new journey begins. Biggest Loser Couples premieres Tuesday, 8, 7 central on NBC. NBC's NFL Wild Card Playoffs brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. By Sprint, get NFL Mobile Live only on the Now Network. By Toyota and the line of scrimmage. And by Budweiser, reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. Camelback Mountain and inside University of Phoenix Stadium as the Falcons on their second series after the turnover. It's led to the Arizona touchdown. Turner gets nothing as Arizona again stops the run led by Hayes. Well, Lawyer Malloy will admit as he moves up in age that this is not what he does best. He prefers being down in the box playing the run. At that time, fooled slightly, managed to get back in play. But then it was Larry Fitzgerald, <laughs> and there's the dad, the sports writers up there saying, uh, my son what is you, the hero of the game. What so you, yeah, that's what it, his lead is, my son opened the game with an unbelievable catch. Chip off the old block, yes indeed. <laughs> Second down and nine, and a flag down, first penalty of the game. Ball start against the Falcons. John Perry is today's referee. Ball start, number 85, offense, five yard penalty. And could this game have started any more poorly for the Atlanta Falcons? No. This is a team that typically is used to playing in front, uh, and they really have not had to ever put Matt Ryan in a position where he has to simply drop back, throw the football. They've been able to rely on their running game, but so far Arizona has come up big against Michael Turner. So second down and 15. Hand off to Turner. And again, not much doing. They stop him right at the 20-yard line. Well, Matt, Gene Watson, uh, Gabe Watson, the tackle. Well, you can see Matt Ryan when he's leading, and he is pretty special out yep. there. Big reason why the rookie of the year. But you look down here when he's trailing. Quarterback rating of just 77. That's pretty pedestrian. So they certainly don't have to panic at this point, but here they are again, third down and 10, must passing situation. Ryan fires to the sideline. It's complete right to the 30 yard line. Catch is made by Roddy White. White is going to the Pro Bowl. He caught 88 during the regular season for 1,300 yards. Much better that time by Matt Ryan. Watch him keep his eyes down the field this time. Look off the safeties. Come late over to Roddy White and able to pick up the first down. Much more calm approach. Much better looking in the pocket. That's the Matt Ryan that was the rookie of the year. And probably a sigh of relief from him, too, after getting that third and long conversion. Ryan backpedaling, fires off his back foot and throws it away. That was a strange looking I, play I know it looked there. Like there was, I was expecting a flag. It looked like it, they jumped off sides, and I think Matt Ryan thought he had a free play. Mike Smith 
Saying, are you kidding me? <laughs> Trying to help him out. <laughs> Mike always with a smile on his face, but I don't, I, really that could have been really dangerous. Yeah. I think Matt Ryan thought it was a free play. Lucky for him, he threw it out of bounds instead of trying to throw it up. Second and ten from the eye. Turner. Hit in the backfield and driven back. Dansby met him again. Well, I tell you, for a questionable defensive line, this defensive line is living in the backfield for Atlanta right now. Look at all the penetration as they try to pull guards and tackles out in front of Michael Turner. Chikeo Kiefer just getting in the backfield and getting there first. And this has to be a bit of a shock now for the Atlanta Falcons that they cannot run the ball any better than what they're doing. But you saw Dansby raise up and call a timeout. So the Cardinals spend a timeout. We'll be back. Look at this beautiful stadium. Our Aerial coverage today brought to you by Duracell. Here's the offsides that we thought we saw. We did see. <laughs> it was Antonio Smith and Gabe Watson jumping off sides, and the Falcons were lucky. Third and 13 then for Ryan, who's sacked. O'Keefer got him from behind. So this much maligned Arizona defense up to the task here in the first quarter as they get Matt Ryan. Yeah, one of the problems that the Arizona Cardinals have had this season is they really have not had great pass rush from the outside. But they have the Atlanta Falcons so far out of their game by stopping this run that now there is an opportunity to get some pressure on Matt Ryan that maybe hasn't been there for the most part this season. And Atlanta has done a much better job of protecting the passer this season. Rare for them to allow a sack. And here's Roll on the punt return. Stopped after a short game. 49 yards on the punt. He lost one on the return, but the Cardinals get it back. They have the lead. That's what's so special about Larry. I can put the ball away from him, and he's still got an uncanny ability to, to come up with the big catch. I know what people at home see, and they think, wow, that was an unbelievable catch. For us, it's kind of commonplace because we see it every day. And true to form, Fitzgerald did make one of those patented catches in the end zone. 7 0 Arizona as they take over at their own 24 yard line. Edger and James dodging would be tacklers. Gets it out to the 29 yard line. Are you sure the Falcons and Cardinals didn't switch <laughs> uniforms? <laughs> I mean what we saw out of the Cardinals they come out in the first series and they go pass pass pass. And then the next series they go run 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 and the flea flicker for the touchdown they come out and start running again. And I think part of what's happening now is the Atlanta Falcons have brought in so many defensive backs and are playing the pass until they begin to get out of that look. They're just going to keep pounding the football. Edwin James looks good. Yeah, Arizona saying uh, we're going to run it till you stop it. Five yards on that first down carry and Warner back to the air to Fitzgerald who clutches it in stride. Ball came loose after he was down. He made it to the 40 yard line almost the 40 yard line before he's tackled by Eric Coleman. Just a tremendous read that time by Kurt Warner. It looked like there was going to be a two deep safety look and yet Kurt knew that it was going to turn into a single safety and he just threw it right in the seam. This is Kurt Warner at his best and Larry Fitzgerald we were talking to him the other day. He said Kurt had to teach me how to be a wide receiver. I throughout the course of my career have been a deep guy down the sideline comebacks jumping up in the air. He taught me those end cuts. James again. James like the edger and James of old he's inside the 35 of the Falcons Coleman with his second straight tackle. Well maybe they should have let edger and James rest <laughs> earlier in his career because this is really startling. I I'm sure the fans of the Arizona Cardinals who have watched this team remember they rank last in the National Football League in rushing. This has just been a pass happy great wide receivers great quarterback. Hope that you can hold up with the running game. Look at Andrew. Yeah. And I can't believe it. Maybe Why they not? heard that he wanted to get out of here and they're trying to make him happy. 
Five runs, five passes for the Cardinals. James has run all five of those 33 yards, averaging 6.6 .6 yards a carry so far. And once again, though, the Cardinals have to take a timeout. That's their second, second timeout. Second They've timeout. already burned two here in the first half. Tuesday, the biggest loser returns, and this time their lives are on the line. The biggest loser couples, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on NBC. Well, the Cardinals able to run the football and able to stop the run so far. They've limited Turner to four yards on four carries, while Edger and James has been able to run successfully, setting up the pass. Yeah, and it really has been the key. I tell you, with the way that Arizona can throw the football, if they establish this kind of a running game, there are going to be a lot of teams going to have trouble stopping them. This has been a fantastic offense all season, but that has been the missing link, the missing element for these guys. And so far today, it looks great. Draw play. This is Arrington with his first carry. And twisted down by Chauncey Davis on that one. You know, every one of these running backs for Arizona has sort of taken their turn a little bit this season. Errington is more of the scat back coming out as now Kurt Warner goes into the no huddle offense. Tim Hightower was the starter during the middle part of the season after Edron James started. Now it's back to Edron James again. Third and five. Warner backs away, surveys the defense, changes the play. Warner unloads it through the hands of his intended receiver, Bolden. Bolden has yet to make a catch. He had 89 during the regular season. Well, that is really Anquan Bolden's game it is the catch and run. And the one thing the Falcons talked about was that they could not allow the yards after the catch today. That once Anquan Bolden got it in his hands, they were going to have to tackle him. Of course, he's got to get it in his hands first. Mike Smith saying that was one of the uh, keys to victory for the Falcons was to limit those yards after the catch. Don't give up the big plays. So here's a punt by Graham. Brian Finneran deep for the Falcons. It's going to hit and take a wonderful bounce for the Cardinals down around the five yard line. Perfectly executed 30 yard punt. No return backing the Falcons up deep. And with 416 left in this opening quarter, everything has gone Arizona's way so far. They've limited Turner to four yards on four carries. Boy, it has been an unexpectedly tough day so far for Michael Turner. Remember, this guy was second in the MVP balloting. He weighs about 240 pounds, runs a 4440. They have been dominating up front this entire season and yet thus far against a suspect Arizona Cardinals defense he has gotten nothing. So spot the ball at the seven where Atlanta puts it into play. Turner. Got it for about three yards to the 10 yard line as we check in with Tiki. Earlier this week guys Michael Turner's grandmother Minnie Smart passed away and it's been a hard week for him. But he said that he got a lot of support from his family and his friends. And he said he wanted to come out and have a good day today just to make her proud. Well, that was one of the better runs so far. He was very close to his grandmother in the uh, Chicago metropolitan area. And uh, he took it extremely hard. Came back into Arizona on a private plane late yesterday. Second down and seven. Play action fake. Ryan's pass nearly intercepted. Intended for Jenkins and Roderick Hood nearly picked it off. Well, Roderick Hood, a guy that has been picked on a little bit here lately, coming up with a big play there. But, you know, Tom, one of the problems that Atlanta is going to have without the running game now is the Cardinals are not biting on the play action the way that most teams do. Typically when you play Atlanta you have to commit so much to try and stop this running game that those play actions bootlegs and waggles just eat you up. But right now the running game's not going well enough to set up the pass. Matt Ryan only one of four 11 yards and the interception yep. and sacked again at the five yard line. Second sack of the day this one by Bertrand Berry who had five sacks in the regular season.
Bertrand Berry coming off the edge working against the rookie Sam Baker and you could see how late Sam Baker got off the ball. One of the great advantages of playing in crowd noise like this and closing the dome and all that is those tackles can't hear the snap count and that time it cost him a sack. Kanan will punt from deep in his own end zone. Low snap he got it and got it away. Breston comes up on the ball then backs off. Picks it up dangerously on the hop and immediately taken down. Well, so far, Arizona's defense is dominated. Did I say that? <laughs> and we want to stay tuned, of course, for game two of NBC's wild card doubleheader. Peyton Manning in the Colts, LT in the Chargers. And immediately following our game, stay tuned for the Diet Pepsi Bridge Show. All that coming up next, only on NBC. Wild card Saturday. Here's the AFC playoff picture with Indiana and San Diego, the 4 5 matchup, as uh, is this matchup in the NFC. And then tomorrow, Baltimore and Miami, while Tennessee and the Steelers earned the buys. Arizona once again takes over possession of the football with a first down at their own 45 yard line. Warner for Fitzgerald, who got tangled up with the defender Foxworth pretty close call there they can call a foul called the cutoff where if the guy immediately cuts in front of the defender and he did didn't he I, yeah, that's, <laughs> I don't know what the pure definition of that is right now but that's what I would have said that was I think Mike Smith is more concerned about maybe he got ripped back the other way so sometimes the officials will go all right one on you and one on the other guy so that's a wash. Second and ten. Kirk Warner's in the shotgun. Blitz comes from the Falcons, and Warner lets it go as he's taken down. Lucky to get it away. That quick release of Kurt Warner, intended for Fitzgerald and Lawyer Malloy, was putting the pressure on from his safety spot. Yeah, no more sitting back and letting Kurt Warner play his games. Now we're starting to see the pressure. Lawyer Malloy coming on a safety blitz. And it was interesting talking to the Falcons. They made the point that Kurt Warner, even when you get him to the point where he's almost sacked, he has the ability to get the ball out of his hand. So you really have to, when you're trying to sack him, tackle his arms. He has a propensity to fumble the football anyway. So shoot for his arms. Taking a lot of hits, as you see. And facing a third and ten here. Steps up in the pocket and throws nearly intercepted through the hands of the defender Brooking. Heath Brooking uh, really should have picked that one off, huh? It didn't go right through his hands? Yeah, it did. And you're talking about 50 yards of field position here. This is an easy interception. This ball was not thrown hard. Even those defensive players with bad hands ought to be able to catch <laughs> that one. But it looked like he only got the underneath hand on it. Kurt Warner lucky there. Warner during the regular season threw 14 interceptions with 30 touchdowns. Here's the Graham punt. Douglas. Great coverage again by the Arizona special teams. Michael Adams was the man that made the play that time after a 46 yard punt. No return. Well, we've talked a lot about Atlanta's coverage teams. Right. I think the Cardinals got a little sick of hearing about it. Of course, the Atlanta Falcons record breaking this season and limiting punt return yardage and Arizona got tired of reading those clippings. Dawkins allowing an NFL record low 49 punt return yards in the regular season. That's an incredible number. Once again, the Falcons backed up deep. Two and a half to go first quarter. From their eight. Turner. Two yards to the ten. Well we talked about some of the distractions but certainly Michael Turner has had a distraction off the field as well a police called to his house for a domestic dispute and on the other side Larry Fitzgerald had a restraining order made public this week so two of the big names in the game a lot to think about off the field as well I'm sure the NFL as they always do will take a good hard look at both of those cases. Ryan on second down finds his receiver for a first down. That was White who made the catch. It goes for 10 yards and an Atlanta first down. Rogers Cromartie the tackle. 
Well, it's really been fun to watch Roddy White and his development during the course of his career. At one time, he was thought of as a bust. It just was not going well for him at all. Maybe a little bit to do with the fact that Michael Vick was the quarterback and not the pure passer. Right. Talking to Michael Jenkins before the game, he said, hey, this Matt Ryan kid, he, uh, he's one of those Peyton Manning, Tom Brady kind of guys. Atlanta record this season for him. Here's Turner. Can't get to the outside. Grabbed by the ankle by Hood, who held on until help arrived. You know, Tom, one of the things that we see a lot of with this Atlanta offense, um, and talking to Clancy Pendergast, the defensive coordinator for Arizona before the game, he said, we consider this to be the most creative running game that we've seen. These guys and the New York Giants, they do such a great job with their cutback blocking, their cutback runs, but so far today, the Cardinals have taken away that cutback and really have just kept them to the front side. Their Pro Bowl safety, Adrian Wilson, saying Atlanta will fool you. You have to keep your eyes focused. Here is a long run by Norwood. And so far, Chris, uh, Turner, seven carries, 11 yards. Incredibly that they've been able to stop him so well. This is right close to the first down on the carry by Norwood. And Jarius Norwood has popped a few big ones. But you can see typically now, Jarius Norwood, you saw the fullback or the tight end, whoever it was, going across the formation. That's where they like to bend it back. But right now, Arizona is more playing that front side and taking away the backside cutback. And the final second ticks away to end the first quarter of this NFC wild card game. Arizona leads Atlanta 7 to nothing at the end of the first. NBC's NFL wild card playoff continues right after these messages. McDonald's tender, juicy, made with white meat chicken McNuggets. Dip them, stack them, pop them, love them. <laughs> you nug nut, you. Because you had a bad day, you take it one down. You sing a sad song just to turn it around. You say you don't know, you tell me don't lie. You work at a smile. Wednesday, 8, 7 central on NBC. Sunday, January 25th, an epic movie event. Unlock the greatest secrets of our time. The best-selling novel comes to television. The Last Templar, January 25th on NBC. We start the second quarter of this wildcard playoff game with the Atlanta Falcons and their rookie quarterback and rookie coach down 7-0. And of course, uh, tomorrow, that record will be short lost <laughs> tomorrow. Oh, it'll be the shortest lift. Flacco on the Harbaugh for the uh, Ravens will equal that feat of rookie coach and rookie quarterback. First down for the Falcons from their 30. Hand off to Turner. Nice run. That's his best of the day so far. That one gained 13 yards for Michael Turner before Hood put the stop on him. Well, right now they're doing a lot of the stuff that they had been doing in the past, going there, and typically they cut it back. But you'll see now what they're doing is they're showing that and staying front side, and that's the reason now they've been starting to run the football. Matt Ryan whispering to his players, it's so loud, you have to get right up in their ear. First down pass, whoops it complete to Jenkins. 
And Jenkins has a first down, so two straight plays net first downs for the Falcons. That one covered 13. Right now, Adrian Wilson is just living at the line of scrimmage, the safety. So now that they're finally down and committing so many people to the run, now you're starting to see Matt Ryan, especially on early downs, having the ability to complete some passes. And once again, Ryan getting right up next to his receivers to give them the play call. First down pass. Out of the backfield, it's complete to Turner. And Turner will be stopped a couple of yards short of the first down. The best drive of the day underway here for the Falcons. Dockett made the stop. Tom, don't you get the feeling that Matt Ryan's finally taking a deep breath? Yeah, and, and I can tell you, I played in a playoff game my rookie year, and I didn't stop hyperventilating until halftime. I mean, it really is. You know the significance of it. It just feels different, and it looks like he's finally starting to make some of those reads now. Give it to Turner, dancing his way across the first down marker. Another first down for the Falcons, and uh, Ryan, by all accounts, has remarkable poise and work ethic, but you had to be a little hyped up, and then to throw an interception on uh, your first possession, kind of get down on yourself, so maybe it took him a little longer to break out of it, but looks like he has. And I like what they're doing here. Now they're going to a no huddle, which helps calm you down a little bit. You know, you're not thinking as much. You're just reacting out there. Quick drop, quick strike. Oh, Douglas wham down on the tackle by Hood. Boy, that was a, that was a nice looking play set up from the beginning. Jenkins had a good block, and you just had a one on one situation on the outside, but Robert Hood. Former Philadelphia Eagle, they can hit back there. Now the rookie Harry Douglas, welcome to the playoffs. <laughs> Jarius Norwood now in for Turner. And Ryan in the shotgun on second and 11. Ryan's pass with a flag down is complete to White. And White out of bounds. He'll have a first down if it holds up. Yeah, that time it looked like Bertrand Berry got caught on that one with the bit of the quick junk trying to get by Sam Baker again. At the snap, offside, number 92 defense. That penalty will be declined. Result of the play, first down. Those outside pass rushers love playing when the crowd noise is loud. Tried to get there, but now Matt Ryan with some of these quick throws. Getting completions out to the playmakers, getting the ball in everybody's hands. And I think in a playoff game in particular, it's good to get the ball in guys' hands. Let them settle down yeah. a little bit. It just it's like a you know a shooter making his first shot. You just sort of relax and get a feel for the game. Ryan perfect so far on this drive. Here's his sixth attempt, and it too is complete. This one at the Pollard. Ball comes free. Fallen on by the Falcons as Wilson ripped it loose. I'm very close there. I thought that it was going to end up being stopping his forward progress, but right. the whistle never did blow. He continued to battle. That was definitely a free ball. And Jarius Norwood made a great play to get on that one. Yeah, Norwood saved the day for the Falcons there. Boy, Adrian Wilson is already having a big game in this one. Down in the box, stopping the run, ripping the ball out. Second and nine from the Arizona 20. Turner penetration again by the Cardinal defense and the stop in the backfield by Gerald Hayes and one of the things they wanted from Gerald Hayes was I don't want to say this so it sounds bad but don't think just go get the guy and so they gave him one gap in this game don't think about making reads don't worry about anything you have this gap shoot through it and maybe that he shoot through it on that one. that's what he did he just reacted didn't he yep. all the way into the backfield so a loss of one on that play, making it third down and ten. Rookie Matt Ryan. Fires complete as the defender fell down. Jenkins makes the catch. Boy, and like Hood fell down, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, and if Jenkins had realized that he had some room over there, I think he could have stopped and turned that one up the field. You'll see Hood fall down. Let's see if he had room to make this catch and stop. 
Yeah, a little bit. He was trying to reach the ball out to pick up the first down, but by doing that, he might have been able to turn that one up and score. Yeah, just short of the first down. So on fourth down, the Cardinal, the uh, Falcons are going to call a timeout to discuss whether Elam will kick a field goal or whether they'll go for it on fourth and one. They may want to challenge that spot too and take a look. LT is fast. Very fast. Fortunately, the pixels you're watching are fast too. They're refreshing at a rate of 120 hertz, twice the speed of most HD TVs. So while he may look like a blur to the guys on defense, every frame on a Vizio is crisp and clear. Introducing the new XVT series. Powerful technology from Vizio. NBC's NFL Wild Card Playoff brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, your beer is as cold as the Rockies. By Hyundai Assurance. We're all in this together and we'll get through it together. And by KFC. It's a flavor blitz. KFC's honey barbecue wings have three layers of flavor. Look at the Grand Canyon from the great state of Arizona. And the Cardinals leading 7 0 with Jason Elam on to attempt a 30 yard field goal for the Falcons. And the veteran Elam, who has hit 29 of 31 field goals in the regular season, notches that one from 30 yards to put the Falcons on the board. Thursday, the return of new comedy on NBC. Hope you're ready. With My Name is Earl and Kath and Kim. The Office and 30 Rock. So gird your loins, new comedy night done right. You forgot to put on your underpants. Thursday on NBC. Kurt Warner on the right has thrown a touchdown pass. Matt Ryan on the left was seven for seven on that last drive, but they got only a field goal. And today's quarterback matchup, as you see, the third most difference in years, nearly 14 years difference between Warner and Ryan. Yeah, and I, we were asking him, were you a little nervous playing against a guy like Kurt Warner? He said, nah, not so much here, but when I played against Philadelphia, that was my hometown team, Donovan McNabb, that one definitely got my attention. Here's Arrington returning the Keenan kickoff. <laughs> Taken down at about the 27-yard line, and Kurt Warner ready to go back out. Had to pump up the tires there a little <laughs> bit first. How we had to have flat. You know, for Kurt Warner, what a ride it's been. Through initially... Signing as an undrafted free agent with Green Bay got cut there then bounced to the Arena League to NFL Europe and of course the Super Bowl seasons with the Rams and the Giants it didn't go so well it got replaced by Matt Leinart and now here he is on the uptick again and you just wonder how many more bounces this guy has in him because this season he has certainly been sensational but at some point Matt Leinart will be the guy they have to make a decision do they re-sign Kurt Warner or turn to Matt Leinart after this season. Warner, it's tipped by Beerman and incomplete as you see uh, Matt Leonard on the on the sideline. Now we're starting to see more guys up around the yeah, line of scrimmage and the pressure coming from Atlanta now as well. And Beerman is a guy that has sort of worked his way slowly in as one of those pressure guys. Take a look at Matt Leonard. Of course, he was assumed to be right. the starting quarterback this year, but. Ken Wisenhunt promised Kurt Warner that it would be an open competition, and when it came to that, Kurt Warner's pretty tough. Warner's missed his last five tosses until that completion, which is the first catch by Bolden. Oh. Short of the 30-yard line. You know, Tom, one of the things that I do think that Atlanta has done a nice job of so far in this game is tackling the open field, yeah. and you have to. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald... They think that running after the catch is so important to Arizona that he lost 15 pounds this offseason because they weren't happy. I mean, he was pretty good at it, three yeah. or four yards per carry, but Anquan Bolden was off the charts, like six or seven yards per carry, so Fitzgerald was trying to match him. Well, all the Atlanta coaching staff identifying that as a key to limit the big plays for this Arizona passing game. Here's Bolden again, and he has a first down down the sideline. Touchdown! 71 yards!
Well, I guess that would qualify as a little <laughs> run after the catch. What happens is right here, the safety is going to get picked. Lawyer Malloy, see all the crowd in that bunch? He was late getting there, and then he simply took a bad angle, and Bolden took off. He came in with a bad shoulder, not a bad leg, and you could just see the veteran Malloy taking a bad angle on that one, and was unable to catch up. Extra point attempt by Rockers splits the middle. And the big play, 71 yards. That's what Atlanta feared. It's Bolden that catches that one from Kurt Warner. Warner's second touchdown pass of the game. 14-3. You know those cold Coors Lights you and your buddies were saving for after the game? Yeah. Mike Ditka just took one of them. What's he doing? Coach Ditka? Put Coach Bill Spear down and put your headset on. Put your headset on and listen to him, Michael. There you go, ladies. Coach, now Mike Ditka's giving your Coors Light away. Mike! Mike! Chill out, Brian. Cross Brewed Coors Light, official beer sponsor of Super Bowl 43. Coach, Mike Ditka's still reaching for your cold Coors Light. Get it up! Come on, man. 14-3, Cardinals over the Falcons in this NFC wild card matchup. Kurt Warner's thrown two touchdown passes, 42 yards and 71 yards. And coaches always want balance in their offense, right? Fitzgerald, two catches, 72 yards, a score. Bolden, two catches, 72 yards, a score. That works. Here's Norwood returning the kickoff and slammed to the turf at about the 23 yard line. Good special teams coverage by Aaron Francisco. And the brain trusts Bidwell and Graves happy that their team's up 14-3. Final season continues. Every episode is a television event. Welcome to County General. In a season of surprises, you never know who will show up. ER, the final season. New ER, Thursday on NBC. Point of concern for the Cardinals. Bolden, after scoring that touchdown, pulling up lame. And they've been working on him over on the sideline. Try to get a report on what his injury might be. On September 28th against the Jets, Bolden took a brutal hit from Eric Smith, who was later fined 50000 and suspended the game. Bolden had multiple facial fractures fixed with seven plates and 40 screws, but he took no painkillers, missed only two games. You said in the open he was tough. Yeah, and I think the moral to the story is this guy's going to be back. There's no way you're going to keep him out. But you can tell for a wide receiver, a hamstring injury is definitely a factor. But I was talking with him about that play, and he said, you know, they called out the stretcher, and everyone wanted to take me off on a stretcher. He said, I wanted to fight him at that point. He said, I am not going off this field on a stretcher. But he ended up with no choice. But three weeks later, he was back playing after all that facial surgery and all those plates put in. And took no painkillers. White had a first down reception for seven and he gets it again for a first down for the Falcons. And uh, Matt Ryan's finding his rhythm. He's hit nine in a row, I believe. Rogers Cromartie made that stop for the Cardinals. Well, you know, typically you have to run the ball to set up the pass, but I think what's happening now with the Falcons is they're trying to throw the ball to set up the run. The Cardinals have been up and around the line of scrimmage, in particular Adrian Wilson, all day. So they're taking some of these quick throws to try and spread this defense horizontally a bit and create some running lines. Norwood, the only setback, play action fake to him. And then Ryan whips it down the field, a man wide open, oh. dropped the ball. That was White. Normally the sure-handed Roddy White was wide open and couldn't hold on. Oh, what a beautifully designed play that time by Mike Malarkey. It looked like a bootleg back to that side and then he stops and throws it all the way across the field and you cannot have an easier pass to catch than that one. He couldn't have taken his eyes off of the ball. It almost hit him in the eyes and Fitzgerald <laughs> can't even believe it. That's that's like watching a guy with the yips. It makes you nervous. <laughs> Would have been 36 yards instead incomplete. Second and ten again to the air and wide of Jenkins incomplete. For the first time ever in a dance competition unlike any other, it's country versus country on Superstars of Dance, premiering tomorrow at 9, 8 Central on NBC. You ever dance like that at your yeah, high school? All dance the time, yeah, sure. I was good at it. Uh -huh. 
Third down and ten. Well, that Roddy White drop is looming large right now in what's beginning to look like it may be a shootout. Ryan under pressure steps up delivers and caught nice catch by Michael Jenkins and that will be enough for the Atlanta first down it covered 21 yards a great protection that time up front by Atlanta look at all the blitzers coming off the edge over here and yet Matt Ryan had the presence of mind to step up into that pocket as they ran him by able to complete a big big pass pretty remarkable as you mentioned the protection that Atlanta's offensive line allowed 30 fewer sacks than last season. Play clock at five. Ryan under pressure. Managed to get rid of it to Jenkins. Jenkins fighting his way before Hood forces him out of bounds. I mentioned the offensive line and what a great improvement they have had. The much maligned Atlanta offensive line, by the way. Todd McClure said, we've always been the scapegoat, but uh, not this season. What a job they've done. Yeah, look at the sack numbers there. Went from 47 to 17, but McClure telling us it was really Matt Ryan. His ability to get the ball out has made all the difference in the world for us. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Ryan with a handoff to Turner. Turner again hit in the backfield as the Cardinals more often than not have met him in the backfield with great penetration to stop the run. And they're doing a great job staying in their gaps here. Watch these guys stay backside. They're not chasing this thing to the front side. They're being patient. That time Gerald Hayes right there sitting in the hole. The defensive line doing their job. Nobody is chasing ghost as they call it out around the edge. They are waiting for that comeback. Third down. Low snap. Ryan has it. Rifles it, and it's complete. White held on to that one despite three Cardinals surrounding him. Rogers Cromartie, the first one on the scene. It gains eight yards. You know, one of the. things about Matt Ryan and I really have not seen this kind of stat before especially out of a young quarterback is that he is much more successful throwing to his left typically that is not true of any quarterback because they want to always go to that open field yeah. side to the right side but his numbers much better going to the left than going to the right that one good enough for a first down as he throws to the left 64 percent and a 98 rating nearly 20 points better threw that one off his back foot while he was being chased. Look at that again Chris and. Yeah is I there mean, any explanation at all. Yeah, no <laughs> I'm not smart enough to come up with one because you think about it as a quarterback they always open up and they're dropping back and they're you know they can see the right side without yeah. straining and yet it takes a real confidence level to go to the left because typically you're not seeing that develop. Mike Malarkey there the offensive coordinator just has such tremendous faith in this young man he's willing to call anything. Ryan quick release across the middle for another first down to White. Roll wrapped him up but not until he had 12 yards. Well the key's been the offensive line so far here look at all these guys coming up here in a blitz look but that protection holds up and Matt Ryan as has been his story this season the ability to read it get it out there quickly and these receivers making plays on the ball well that's another third down conversion he's hit some big ones so far on this drive. High formation this time. Now they break it as Norwood goes in motion. Ryan looks left looks right scrambles to his right and will duck out of bounds and again showing his uh, presence of mind 
the former ACC player of the year who threw over 9,000 yards in his BC career and he comes to the NFL this is his first NFL pass look at this 62 yards to Jenkins for a touchdown his first career pass as a pro goes for a TD an auspicious start for Matt Ryan yeah, this game's easy no problem. <laughs> well, the next game when they played at Tampa Bay, you yes. discovered it wasn't so easy. <laughs> That's true. They took a beating. We sure did. Turner. Taken down at the 15-yard line. Well, now the Falcons showing a lot of different looks, that time going to the full house backfield to try and create just a little bit of confusion. But this has really been, I mean, typically throughout the course of the season, you have to understand it has been the running game that has gotten the Falcons to this point. But without Matt Ryan today, this thing just would be a little bit ugly at this point. He has made all the plays in the clutch to keep him in it. Under three and a half to go in the first half. Atlanta playing from behind. Unusual for the rookie Ryan, who hits Finneran on that one. Brian Finneran's first catch. And another first down as Atlanta methodically moving down the field behind their rookie quarterback. Boy, it's good to see Brian Finneran back in playing again. Roderick Hood giving him a lot of room, but Finneran missed the last two seasons with knee injuries, and he finally got himself back on the field. One of the top third down receivers in the game. And he's finally gotten back in and he is contributing. Atlanta three for three on third down conversions in this drive. First and goal. Turner. Nobody there. Touchdown. Well, the first major mistake here you're going to see both guys come onto the inside gap and Carlos Dansby just completely out of position they have been so disciplined in their gaps throughout the course of this first half that the first major mistake we've seen and a badly needed touchdown by the Falcons as Elam is on to attempt the extra point and it is good rookie Matt Ryan hands off to Michael Turner for the touchdown as the Falcons cover 77 yards in 14 plays to narrow the gap on the Cardinals. Arizona 14, Atlanta now 10 after that touchdown directed by the rookie Matt Ryan. And Ryan, the rookie, and the veteran Kurt Warner sharing some thoughts before the game. And I'm sure that Matt Ryan, uh, who is so studious in his approach to the game, has taken a page or two from Kurt Warner's book. Yeah, there's no question when we asked Kurt about Matt and he said, you know, the thing that impresses me most about him is even when he makes a mistake, he comes back and you can't tell it. You cannot tell he's not tentative the next time out there and exactly what happened today. He threw the interception on the first pass, came right back and has played really well. Canaan's kickoff will reach the end zone. Arrington downs it for the touchback. Well, on February 1st, the world will watch history made as Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band take the field for their first Super Bowl performance ever. The Bridgestone Super Bowl 43 halftime show featuring Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. That'll be February 1st only on NBC. Can't wait for that. I'll be on the pirate ship down there in Tampa <laughs> watching the show. It'll be great. Tying an NFL record in the postseason, joining uh, Far of Elway and Bradshaw, decent company. Yeah, how about that. There is numbers on the day. Haven't seen quite as much from Edger and James now back in the I formation. Well, maybe that's why hit in the backfield falls forward back to the line of scrimmage. Let's go down to Tiki. Guys, we just found out that Anquan Bolden just had some cramps. Now, even though it's generally not humid in Arizona, it's a little bit humid down here on the field. I'm just standing around and I'm sweating a little bit. So hopefully he took in a lot of water and he's going to be able to continue the rest of this game. Can you call that a workout, Tiki? Is you, are you at a cardio day for you? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to open the roof for you. Holding on the field. Kurt Warner. Protection breaks down and he dumps it off incomplete. 
avoided the sack but unable to complete it. It's going to bring up third and ten. And Abraham, John Abraham. Uh, he made the point that if I don't tackle Kurt Warner's arms, even though I think I have a sack, I won't have a sack. See, there he missed the arm, and he said that's what Kurt Warner does. He has a way of just taking it and, like, pitching it out there, and it's incomplete instead of a sack. Abraham was 16 and a half sacks in the regular season, third in the NFL behind Ware and Porter. Warner across the middle. Up for grabs and intercepted. On the deflection, picked off by Atlanta. It was Chivas Jackson that came up with it on the deflection. Off the hands of the receiver into the arms of Jackson. Spread formation, so Warner has to get this thing out quickly. And the receiver just simply did not get his head turned around. Jeremy Urban, I don't know if he was looking perhaps to try and get some kind of a rub or a pick inside there, but he clearly was not looking for the ball. And Kurt Warner has to be upset. You know, they, they talked about Kurt Warner and he gets on these receivers. You know, you think he's such a nice guy and all that stuff. He will wear these guys out when they make a mistake like that. That was a big one. Well, Arizona's first touchdown of the game came after a Matt Ryan interception. And now Atlanta trying to return the favor. From the 23 yard line. Ryan on the up. Complete. Caught by Marcus Pollard as we've reached the two-minute warning. 157 left first half. Arizona clinging to the lead. Earlier today, there were multiple reports that LaDainian Tomlinson's groin injury was worse than previously known. Well, here he is walking into Qualcomm Stadium a short while ago. And Andrea Kramer reports that he's been receiving extensive treatment and was getting ready to get taped up and work up and that North Turner expects him to play. So he was expected to uh, warm up shortly. And coming ahead on the Toyota Halftime Show, look back at our first half here. Look ahead to the Chargers, Colts, and the latest on LT, plus Al Michaels' conversation with Tony Dungy about what the future may hold for the Colts coach. Matt Ryan has hit 15 of his last 18 passes. Here he hands to Turner. Turner hit. Dansby, who is... Uh, Almost like he's keyed on Turner every play today. That's a collision. I, I tell you, you know, it's not for the faint of heart to come up and hit Michael Turner because even if you're a big stud linebacker like Carlos Dansby, you're going to knock your helmet off every once in a while and make that kind of play. But, Tom, the one thing I would say is despite the early struggles, Atlanta has stayed with the running game. Uh -huh. Despite the early success, Arizona has gotten away from theirs. And that was a strange looking. <laughs> tell you, Matt Ryan must be doing a number with yeah. his snap count up there. Gabe Watson, that's two or three times he's come across prematurely, although they haven't all been called, have they? No. <laughs> Offside, defense, number 98, unabated to the quarterback. Five yard penalty, first down. Well, they talked about trying to get penetration. They talked about the ability to stop this run by getting in the backfield and disrupt those pulling guards, disrupt the tight ends coming across or the fullbacks coming through. But sometimes, and it's amazing for a young quarterback, you know, the snap count may be the last thing on your mind, yeah. but he's maintained his poise and played the complete game. So first and five from the eight-yard line. Play action fake. Ryan's pass. Overshoots Roddy White, who had broken free in the end zone. Too safe. Too safe. You know, I know you don't want to make a big mistake here, but this is wide open. You can't miss this throw. As well as he's played, this one is a big mistake. He had to drop it over the top. It's not an easy throw. He had to try and throw it around Antrell Roll, but you can't miss it by 10 yards. And that's exactly what he did. White to the sideline. Interrupt me, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Ryan from the gun. Yeah, very good. Thank you. And play is stopped with a timeout taken by Atlanta. 112 left in the first half. Atlanta threatening to take the lead. Well, Atlanta threatening here, as you said, they've stayed with their running game, whereas uh, 
so much success early for Arizona. Why have they not gone back to it? I'm not exactly sure, but you can count for sure that Atlanta will never get away from it. And now the pressure to make a play right on Matt Ryan. Ryan hands off to Turner. A couple of tough yards. Well, Antonio Smith, and they've got all the big boys in there for the Cardinals today. They've been playing Gabe Watson. They don't really have as many of the pass rusher types in here because they knew they were going to have to commit fully to trying to stop this run. And now we have a big moment in the ball game. Third down and four. So the Cardinals trying to prevent giving up the score after the turnover. Ryan throws it. It's complete for a first down. The catch made by White who took the hit from Rogers Cromarty but held on first and goal Atlanta. Well Roddy White missed the easy one but caught the tough one and Cromarty gave him a big shot and knocked him down past that first down marker but this was well officiated here. Clearly the forward momentum was beyond the first down line. Big play right there. Antrell Roll, a former cornerback, now playing safety, unable to get there in time. First and goal, two-yard line with 27 seconds left in the first half. Ryan fakes, fires, touchdown. Caught by Justin Peel, his tight end. And so the Falcons get the interception on the deflected pass and turn it into a touchdown to take the lead. What a great call by Mike Malark here. Everybody in the building thinking run. They go with this bootleg look and just simply burn them. There's no way for the Cardinals that you don't stay backside in that situation on the goal line and protect against the run. Bold play with a rookie quarterback in the playoffs, but a great call. Elam, the extra point attempt. And it is good. So the turnover results in the Atlanta touchdown. Matt Ryan throws the touchdown pass. Atlanta in front. Matt Ryan getting congratulations from his offensive lineman after leading that touchdown drive. Yeah, not such a great start to this ball game. First pass he throws, intercepted by Ralph Brown. And then he ends up with one that was almost picked off. And then he just got hot. And I think, Tom, the most impressive part of what he's done so far in this first half are the number of third downs that he's converted. And that's not been third and short. These have been some third and long situations. And Matt Ryan has just simply stepped up. He stood tall in the pocket, and he has delivered. Look at those numbers, 17 of 21 since that slow start. Arrington is going to bring it out of the end zone. Not a great decision as he's slammed down at the 16 yard line and don't forget coming up our Toyota halftime show guys in the studio will take a look at this first half they'll have the latest on LT and Al Michaels will speak with Colts coach Tony Dungy it's all coming up at halftime. You know, Tom, I'd be stunned if LT didn't at least make an attempt. Remember last year in the playoff yep. game with the knee he sat out kept his helmet on was heavily criticized after that one and so you've got to think he's certainly feeling yeah. the pressure to get out there and at least make an attempt of it today but I'll tell you they're not hurting with Darren Sproles in there that little guy is something else. Let's see what the Cardinals try to do here with that. Quick strike offense a little screen pass which gets next to nothing to Fitzgerald and the fans want wanted Warner to go downfield with it as they let him know that they weren't too happy with that. So Matt Ryan the rookie quarterback has his team in front in the first half of this NFC wild card playoff game. Coming up the Toyota halftime show but first these messages from your local NBC station. It's a new year go, go. with new excitement and new shows right here on NBC. This week, NBC premieres three new series. The best dancers of the world compete in Superstars of Dance. 
Then the biggest, biggest loser couples. I'm changing my life. And how we do it puts real people in unreal situations. Oh my God. Plus, all your favorite shows are all new, all week long. This is objectively awesome. Start the new year here. Watch what I do. Tomorrow on NBC. My goal is to add to my hat collection. Chicago Blackhawks, one goal. For tickets, go to chicagoblackhawks.com. My goal. Let's talk that one. Chicago Blackhawks, one goal. For tickets, go to chicagoblackhawks.com. Tonight, Paul Rudd, Beyonce, Saturday Night Live. Welcome to the Toyota Halftime Show, brought to you by Toyota, moving forward. At halftime, the Falcons now flying slightly higher than the Cardinals and leading 17-14 Bob Costas, Matt Millen, Jerome Bettis. We'll talk about this game in a moment, but first, let's look in on the scene at Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. There is LaDainian Tomlinson, came out moments ago to begin warming up. We expect that he will play. How well and for how long, we don't know. There have been multiple reports, which he has declined to comment on, that the groin injury, which was reported earlier this week, first they said it was an abdominal strain, then clarified as some sort of groin injury. New reports say that possibly there is a torn tendon, which obviously would be much more severe. When he came into the stadium, Andrea Kramer asked him about it. He declined to comment. As to the specifics of the injury, he would say only that he has received extensive treatment and that, as you see, he would get taped up, go out and warm up, and hope to play. So we'll keep our eye on it. That obviously is the second game of the doubleheader, the Colts and the Chargers. Now on to this one. It started out very well for the Cardinals, Bus. They were leading 14-3 at one point. You know, and, and you know, Atlanta came back, but I was so surprised at how Arizona came in this, this game plan. Ken Wizard had said, we're not going to throw the football around. We're going to run the ball with Edwin James, and we're going to establish the line of scrimmage. And what they did, they started to run it, and then they used the running game to their advantage and came back with the flea flicker, a form of play action, get the safeties to bite, six down the left sideline. Now, they didn't forget about the other half of their running game, which is Anquan Bolden. Remember Absolutely. we talked about in the pregame how he's going to throw it short and then mm -hmm. he's going to take off and run <laughs> 67 yards down the left sideline after a four-yard pass. Yeah, 71-yard play, four in the air and 67 <laughs> on the ground. But then the pick, it wasn't really Warner's fault off the receiver, and Jackson grabs it. Chevis Jackson makes the pick and really... One turnover, both sides. Yeah. You have one for Atlanta. You have one on the other side. We got ourselves a football game in the second half. You know, as you pointed out in the pregame show, Matt Ryan has matured throughout this first year in the league. Down 14-3. He's a rookie on the road. First playoff game. Not rattled. Malarkey is doing an outstanding job yes. here with this young quarterback. Okay, we move on now to the line of scrimmage where the crew wraps up its stay in Big Piney, Wyoming where a transfer student from sunny Florida talks about playing in one of the coldest places in the United States. On Sunday, February 8th at 4.30 Eastern, 2008 NFL MVP Peyton Manning entering the stadium here for his wildcard weekend matchup against the Chargers has, logically enough, been voted the starting quarterback for the AFC squad. Manning has been selected to the Pro Bowl for the ninth time now in his career. Well, Peyton Manning and Tony Dungy are among the most successful quarterback coach tandems in NFL history, and they now stand four victories away from a second Super Bowl title in three years. A subplot, though, is the question about Dungy's future, as once again, he says he plans to decide whether he'll retire only after the Colts play their final game this postseason. Last night, Al Michaels sat down with Dungy to discuss his future. Do you know in your mind if you'll be back or not back next year, right now? I'm leaning a certain way, but every year um, I've kind of learned, and my wife told me, don't make the decision and then go back. So take some time. I told Jim Irsay after the Super Bowl uh, that I was leaving, and he said, take a week and think about it. And I changed my mind in that week. So that, that's what I'm going to do after our last game, whenever that is. I'm going to take a week because I want to make sure that I'm ready because when I do leave, I'm going to be leaving. I'm not, not taking a year off or two years off, um, so I want to make sure. So you're saying when that final game is over, whenever it is, that you will a week later have the definitive answer? Yeah, I will. If you do come back, what will be the reasons that you'll come back? 
Because we've got a, a great team, we've got a fun atmosphere, I'm, I'm working for the best owner in the league, uh, and we've got a chance to win next year. We've got the MVP of the league that you're working with. There's so many reasons to come back, and I still enjoy coaching. Once we're up on them, they're going to gamble even more, so we just got to be smart, we'll make them pay. Good work. If you don't come back, what will be the primary factors in not returning? It would be because I want to be uh, more of a parent, be around my family a little bit more. Uh, watch my son play his senior year in, in high school football uh, and because I want to do some things with young men, some hands-on stuff. Uh, we had a very, very tough year in Indianapolis this past year, the worst summer we had for homicides. Our, our graduation rate is 19 percent in the public schools um, and, and I, I think there's some things I can do in terms of giving some young men some direction and some hands-on things that uh, I would really enjoy doing and I think is needed. Honestly, if I'm reading between the lines here, Tony, I'm thinking that you're not going to be back next year. Am I reading something into it that you're not saying? Uh, you probably are, because, uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll say this, every year at this time, the last five years, I thought I wasn't going to be back. And then after a week, I decided that I wanted to be. So uh, that's why I, I'm not reading anything into it yet. Do you care about your legacy, what it will be? Not really. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that we won a Super Bowl, but uh, if we hadn't, you know, I wouldn't say, oh, well, you know, it's 28 wasted years. Uh, it's been great. It's been fun uh, working with Chuck Knoll and Denny Green, Marty Schottenheimer, uh, Bill Polian. It has been tremendous, and uh, I've enjoyed it probably more than I've, I've given. So uh, I've gotten a lot out of it. Tony Dungy hoping he doesn't have to make that decision, no matter what it is, until early February. Back to Tom and Chris for the second half from Arizona after this, and we'll see you later on. This has been the Toyota Halftime Show, brought to you by Toyota. Moving forward. I'm here to present the award, Best Supporting Actress in the Motion Picture. First one goes to Leonardo DiCaprio, strangely. It's back and bigger than ever. It's the party of the year for everyone in Hollywood. If looks were a minute, this would be a long day right here. Live and unpredictable. When my 300-pound co-star decided to sit on my face, I thought I'd better win a bloody award for this. The Golden Globe Awards, next Sunday, 7, 6 Central on NBC. Physical education is disappearing from schools across America. That's why NFL Network has created Keep Gym in School. Improving facilities, funding teacher salaries, and inspiring kids towards a lifetime of fitness. Don't let gym disappear. Keep Gym in School. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Warner for the end zone for Fitzgerald. Touchdown! This opportunity is not guaranteed to anyone to happen again. This team is special. You really have to take advantage. You have to win it now. It's been a good season so far, but a perfect season would end with four more wins. So we're ready to start the second half with Atlanta leading Arizona 17-14 in this NFC wild card game from Glendale, Arizona. First half stats, one of the goals of the Falcons was ball possession in order to keep Kurt Warner and company off the field, and they succeeded in that. They certainly did, and I tell you, due in large part to the fact that uh, Matt Ryan was able to convert so many third downs. He started off not so well, but completed his last four third downs, and that really was the difference as they took the lead. Rackers with a second half kickoff. Norwood takes it in the end zone. Darius Norwood found a little lane and is across the 25 to the 27 yard line as we go back to Tiki Barber. I talked to Atlanta head coach Mike Smith right before halftime and he said the turning point 
in the second quarter came when they went to that hurry up offense. Matt Ryan got off to a slow start and he chatted with him a little bit just to calm him down and get his nerve. He also said no matter what their yard per carry he's going to stick with the running game which is contrast to what happened on the other side with the, with the Arizona coach Ken Wisenhunt said that they need to get back to that running game because they had such success. And lastly a quick update on Anquan Bolden they think that he has a strain in his hamstring his return is now questionable. All right thank you Tiki first down for the Falcons here. And a Matt Ryan pass on first and it's complete to Justin Peel. And the pulse of this game, well, after an interception, Fitzgerald with the touchdown catch, another big Kurt Warner touchdown pass to Bolden. But then Atlanta stayed with it. Matt Ryan found his rhythm. And the last touchdown it was after a turnover it was scored by Michael Turner on the ground. And just to back up what Tiki was saying, Atlanta stayed with the run. Turner in his first quarter had seven carries for 11 yards, but the second quarter they kept going to him, eight carries for 31. And Arizona, 33 yards from Edwin James, and there's right at turnover, right into the hands of Roll, who will waltz in for the touchdown. It just popped out of the arms into the hand of Antrell Roll, who had the easy Arizona score. One of the defensive linemen for the Cardinals just shot the gap and completely caught him off guard. That was Darnell Dockett using his quickness and Tom we've seen this throughout the course of the game anticipating snap counts beating these offensive linemen off the ball and what a way to start the second half <laughs> incredible as roll to the applause of the front office takes a 27 yards for the score and so Rackers back for the extra points Wow that barely sneaks through the right upright. But Roll picked it off in midair and took it 27 yards for the go-ahead score. Twenty-one seventeen in Phoenix. Meanwhile in San Diego, the Danian Tomlinson has completed his workout. He told North Turner, who then told Andrea Kramer, that he would play against the Colts later on tonight. Here's the handoff to Turner. Again, tackled in the backfield by Dansby, who's been shadowing him the entire game. The Cardinals only had 10 guys on the field as they got this timeout just before the snap of the ball, but it was gone. It was going <laughs> to be a touchdown, Michael Turner, and that timeout saved them. And then the Tackle of Turner in the backfield. Second and long. Turner out, Norwood in for Atlanta. Here's Ryan. Hit as he delivered the pass and into traffic and caught by White. Strong hands by Roddy White to hold on to that one. Good for the first down. There is a flag on the play. Holding. Number 73. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay. Second down. Harvey Dahl with a hold negates a first down pass. Well Harvey Dahl who was just beaten on the play before by Darnell Dockett now gets beaten with a quick jump again and has no choice but to try and hold. Look at Dockett as he goes the bull rush and for Dahl he has no chance but to hold on and it negates a big play. Second fewest tied for second fewest in the NFL so a rare penalty makes it second and 20. Matt Ryan being chased pass incomplete. That was Barry that was bearing down on Matt Ryan. Well Bertrand Barry is once again working the edge and working the snap counts off the edge that time Obi Mahaley had a chance to chip him. And I think that Claybo may have been anticipating some help on that play when he did not chip him and it allowed Bertrand Berry to come around the edge and right now this right side of the offensive line they both work for minimum wage but Harvey Dahl and Tyson Claybo are struggling. Now yeah, known for their ferocious play. Meanwhile the play clock. And the flag's down. 
Boy, the Falcons look shaky. Yeah, they that are. Play. They, they're I mean, coming out with a very shaky start to the second half. Delay a game. Offense. Half the distance. Third down. So delay a game will put them back even further in. They got to maintain their poise. Now this is kind of the way they started the game. It's exactly right. And now you cannot make a huge mistake here. I would probably anticipate a run with a rookie quarterback here. From their own five. Ryan's going to pass it from the end zone. Way downfield but way off the mark as well. Not even close. Jenkins was 10 yards or so away from it. There's a hold on Barry that wasn't. Yeah, and that's called. a safety, Tom. A hold in the end zone. If that had been called, and yeah. Bertrand Barry justifiably is saying, where's the hold on that one? And that would have been two points for the Cardinals. Sam Baker got away with one. So Kanan now will punt from the back of his end zone. Roll is the deep man along with Breston. Kanan sends it on its way. High boot. Preston hit it before he had a chance to field it, and the flag immediately comes down. Forty-seven yards on the punt, but Preston never had a chance to field it really before he was hit by Dakud. Thomas Dakud with a shot at a interference with the opportunity to complete the catch, number twenty-two of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First and 10, Arizona. Timeout. I think it was a good call. Absolutely it yeah. was. But it's kind of worth that shot, you know. As a guy, you're going for a big play, and you can't really fault him too much here. Sam Baker, the rookie over here working against Bertrand Barry. Watch the difference in the get off. Barry moves a clear step before Baker does but there's the hold and that would have been two points and a safety and the Falcons would have had to kick the ball back to the Cardinals huge no call there he's holding me you saw Barry say after the play here's the running again only the second carry since the first quarter for Edron James who was so impressive in the first and that one that's a pretty good gain on first down yeah and the significance of the play now by Darnell Dockett has allowed the Arizona Cardinals to take a deep breath, get back to their running game. Maybe it would have been much tougher had, in fact, they come out there and were constantly playing catch up. And of course, the third quarter has belonged to the Cardinals through the regular season. Most points in the third by any team in the league. Good catch by Kurt Warner there, yeah. the double count. Blitz was coming, still showing Blitz, and here they come. Warner, it's picked up. And Fitzgerald unable to make the one handed stab. Next week, all your favorite NBC shows are all new all week with the premieres of Superstars of Dance, The Biggest Loser, and How We Do It. It's all starting tomorrow night here on NBC. Did that kind of startle you that Fitzgerald didn't catch that ball? Yeah, one handed. I, mean, I we, thought that's we, his we saw trademark. Spider Man, you know, <laughs> do that in the past. It just didn't <laughs> stick that time. So far, we haven't seen Bolden on the field. Tiki reporting that he had a strained hamstring. So one of their big weapons. Unable to go here so far. Another blitz comes from the Falcons. Warner, that should be interference. I thought. Wow. Wow. Chris Houston, I think, got away with one, did he not? Well, they're letting them play, as sometimes happens in the playoffs. Houston looked like he had a pretty good hold right there. Yeah. If that's not holding or pass interference, or all of the above. Oh man, that's <laughs> wow. Well, that's two penalties that uh, Atlanta's gotten away with here in the third quarter so far. Man, oh man. So it's fourth down and a field goal attempt upcoming from Neil Rackers. Or if they don't get off the field here, that was close. Play clock, out of the way. 51 yards, but no good. No. Wide left. So Rockers, as they hurried out on the attempt, 51 yarder is no good. And Atlanta breathes a sigh of relief. 
as they gave the Cardinals great field position but it doesn't cost them any points and they'll take over when we come back to Arizona. 30 Rock's got some big plans for the new year. Uh, excuse me. Frankly, some things are bigger than others. With a new love for Liz Lemon. Cat sound. And a hearty welcome for Salma Hayek. You forgot to put on your underpants. New 30 Rock, Thursday on NBC. Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons. And Thomas Dimitrov to his left. Yeah, it was the grand slam between Mike Smith and Michael Turner and Matt Ryan. They got them all right this year. Rich McKay was up there too in, the, in that shot as Michael Turner gets the call and as was the case at the start of the game the Arizona defense keeps Turner under control O'Keefer made that hit. But Tom one of the things you always see in the NFL is that the running game gets better as the game goes along you know those defensive linemen they're big guys and they're hustling and they're making plays in the first half but if you just keep pounding it more often than not some big plays will happen in the fourth quarter and you see how the offense has sputtered for the Falcons so far in the third Ryan tried to change that White grabs it complete but no chance to run after the catch with Rogers Cromartie right in his face a little battle going on and this is the third or fourth time now they've come underneath the rookie Cromartie and sometimes these rookies get a little anxious and may want to try and jump one at some point. An NFL rookie record in the postseason for Matt Ryan, who beat Slingin' Sammy Baugh's record. What about that? One of the NFL's greats, Sammy Baugh, now eclipsed by Matt Ryan. Here's Ryan's pass, and it's through the hands of White. It's going almost exclusively to Roddy White. And he's going to go three and out here. Boy, Jarius Norwood just got trucked on this one by Gerald Hayes. Watch this coming right up, and Norwood, who signed of the scat back, <laughs> almost got buried into Matt Ryan. It's one of the things you have to be able to do as a running back in this league is pick up that blitz, and he almost got uh, the backside that time of Norwood. Kanan ready to boot it on fourth down. Off the side of his foot, Breston runs up on it, and it'll go out of bounds. That's only a 31-yard punt. On February 1st, the world will watch history made as Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band will take the field, their first Super Bowl performance. The Bridgestone Super Bowl 43 halftime show, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. And of course, that'll be Super Bowl Sunday, February 1st, only on NBC. We are excited to have the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl right after that. Yeah. The John Madden bus doesn't make it over to Hawaii, <laughs> so I get a little free trip. That's right. Why not? Yeah. You've earned it. <laughs> Since you're on television about every day of the week, as I can tell. Thank you very much. Tiki? Hey, what's happening, guys? You guys know that Pat Tillman was one of the great players in, in Arizona Cardinals history, and they have the memorial Pat, Tim, Pat Tillman uh, Freedom Plaza up here that all the fans come to. As we all know, he was killed in 2004. He was part of that elite Ranger, Army Ranger unit, and he's in the Ring of Honor as well, but there's a lot of tribute paid to Pat Tillman in the stadium. It goes great with all the holidays and the soldiers overseas. A lot of our... Members of the Armed Forces overseas catching this NFL playoff game as Edron James gets the call again. And a couple of yards short of the first down, and someone, the, the light bulb went on. They've gone back to the running game that was successful in the first quarter. Yeah, they sure did. Tom, I want to get back to Pat Tillman for just a minute. You know, he's going to come up this year for a Hall of Fame vote. And if Pat Tillman doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame, who does? Here's a guy that turned down millions of dollars, a three year, $36 million right. deal to go fight for our country. I hope that that is the vote that they will take. I mean, I, this guy is the very essence of what we all hope the NFL and its players will ultimately be. Well said. Here's a big third down pass from Warner. It's complete. Spock, the tight end, has it, and it's a first down for Arizona. Well, you're going to see a little bootleg action now, and it's one of the nice things about being able to have some sort of a running game 
is that now you bring in some of these plays, some of those bootleg plays, some of the play action plays, and it's not just on Kurt Warner to drop back and throw the football. James bounces off of him. Finally, the uh, Atlanta defense reacts and gets him down. It's the second time today that we've seen an offensive lineman make a hit on Edger and James. <laughs> and pretty good hit, too. That time uh, over there it was Levi Brown, who just unable to make the block. You know, for Levi Brown, he was a high draft pick, and they certainly like his development, but. He was one of those guys that in college was one of those real nasty players finishing plays little late hits and all that kind of stuff and that part of his game really hasn't shown up here in Arizona. Play action fake from Warner plenty of time. And the pass is complete to Smith. His fullback. Run out of bounds by Coy Wire. Pretty good day for yeah. Edwin James. Yards after contact. That does include his own players there. So we, <laughs> he may have padded his stats a little, or hurt his stats, I guess, with that. You know, he's he's such an energetic guy, and, and it was interesting talking to Kurt Warner about him. Of course, he was benched earlier this season. He said, "I just kept talking to him because I knew at some point this year he was going to have to be a factor for us to win, and we just kept him engaged and kept talking to him." And he's still there now for him when it matters most. Yeah, kept his head in, in the game, and they've used him effectively today. And here's Kurt Warner, 37 years old, ducking out of bounds with a first down. Well, I'm sure Kurt's not so thrilled to be running the ball at this <laughs> point. But we just talked about Levi Brown. That time he did a nice job on John Abraham, pushing him past the pile. And it wasn't like Kurt was going to put his head down or anything <laughs> no. right there, but uh, he got out and picked up the first down. Well, and everybody in the stadium is glad he didn't. Yeah, maybe other than Matt Liner. <laughs> Interesting though, they've used James in the running game again, and they've had a couple of play action fakes and passes, and here's James again on the run, crossing midfield and still turning his way. Close to another first down. Foxworth and Malloy took two of him to get him down. Well, you see the bounce out ability here of Edger and James. This play was intended to go inside behind the fullback. He didn't like it, but even at this uh, age, he still has the ability to get out around the corner. He went back and he talked to the coaches and he had a list of plays and he really likes that stretch play and I said well did you tell the coaches that that that's the play that you want to run more and he said eh, that's what got me in trouble in the first <laughs> place I, uh, I don't make many suggestions around here and well, they turned that one into the stretch play and picked up a first down and looks like a timeout has been well we have an injury timeout I believe looks like one of the Falcon players is shaken up it's going to be Foxworth, Dominic Foxworth. And Tom, that is significant right there because one thing the Falcons do not have is much depth in the secondary at all. Foxworth, a big addition to this team, picked up just before opening day, and now they are really thin back there. Placed by Brent Grimes, and here's Hightower with a carry. Tim Hightower, the rookie from Richmond, who's been a, a touchdown specialist, a pounder at the running back spot for Arizona with uh, 10 touchdown runs this season. The native of Alexandria, Virginia. Yeah, it was interesting talking to Tim Hightower. He was talking about the highs and lows of his rookie season. I said, what was the worst moment? <laughs> he said, in practice. So one day I was supposed to block Adrian Wilson coming around the edge, and I'd never seen anything like that in my life. He hit me so hard, I was flying, and I could hear my coach, Maurice Carthon, screaming at me before I hit the ground. <laughs> Put him airborne. Warner finds his man. This is Urban who had the deflection earlier, which resulted in a interception turned into a touchdown by Atlanta. Catches this one. Well, Urban makes a nice play. They came on a slot blitz that time, and Kurt, as he does so well, you know, he talks about he really prefers teams to blitz him. He thinks the strength of his game is the ability to read it and get it out of his hand quickly. That time, perfect execution by Kurt Warner. Lots of experience, quick release, result in plays like this. Out of the backfield to James, 
He's hard to bring down too. Brooking and Malloy combine on the hit. Nice job that time. Look at the wall off inside. Not an illegal play, but certainly a play that a lot of teams use. You come in there, you try and create a bit of a crowd, and that time the man coverage got burned because of the pick play. Well, once again, the third quarter looking good for the Cardinals. They got a freak play and fumble recovery in midair for a touchdown, and now they're driving down the field as Warner hands it to Hightower. Hightower breaks the tackle, lowers his head, and pounds inside the 20-yard line where Lawyer Malloy makes the stop. Well, I tell you what, that was a quick step around the corner, wasn't it? And then another quick step by Lawyer Malloy, who comes in. This is what he likes doing best. And on the outside, Larry Fitzgerald, not just a receiver, he's a pretty good holder, too, by golly. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good grip there. It looked like one, he was going to dance with him for a while. Uh, but you get inside that plate, a lot of times the officials can't see it. Draw play, Hightower. Atlanta not fooled. At the 18-yard line, Coy Wire knocks him down. But the Arizona Cardinals, after being dominated on time of possession in the first half, now has sort of turned the tables here by getting back to their running game a little bit. And you have to give credit to Ken Wisenhunt here because he is a guy, remember, coming from the Pittsburgh Steelers. He really wants to establish a team that can run the football and pound it in there, but it just hasn't been their M.O. this season. Wisenhunt in his uh, second year as head coach here after coming over from the Steelers, their offensive coordinator. Warner buys a little time and then finds a receiver, Breston. Jamal Fudge prevented the touchdown, but here's Kurt Warner at his best. Strictly the offensive line. Look at this protection. That has to be at least five seconds worth of protection. And for Kurt Warner, you give him time to survey the field for that long, no way. Look at him standing there, make the throw. Yes, he took the big hit from Grady Jackson, and that's about, let's call it 399 plus. Well, Grady Jackson, right on top. Well, they tell us he knows food. He can't cook, but he knows everything about food. Here's Hightower racing for the touchdown. saw the Cardinals make this mistake earlier and this time it's the Falcons turn they bite down inside Hightower kicks it to the outside and they're simply not there Eric Coleman took the bait went inside and they bounce it out around him Rackers extra point is good impressive drive by the Arizona Cardinals who scored twice here in the third quarter Tim Hightower, the rookie from Richmond, racing to the corner of the end zone to pad the lead for the Arizona Cardinals. James set it up. Hightower finishes it off, 28-17. Across somebody you shouldn't have messed with. Critics are praising Gran Torino as prime vintage Eastwood. Get off my lawn. And the National Board of Review has honored Clint Eastwood as the best actor of the year. Gran Torino, rated R. Now playing in select cities. Opens everywhere January 9th. On... Hightower with a touchdown as Kurt Warner was five for five on the drive to five different receivers, none of whom caught a ball in the first half. Impressive drive by the Cardinals and the kickoff by Rackers through the end zone for the touchback. Well, after nothing longer than a five play drive in the first half, look at this drive here converting four third down plays, 14 plays, 76 yards. And it was Kurt Warner, it was the running game. That's about as good as the Arizona Cardinals have looked all season. And it came in a big, big moment. Tremendous pass protection. This offensive line, this perhaps is their finest game of the season, I think, so far. Now the Falcons and their rookie quarterback, 
in an unaccustomed position, having to play from behind. Going to go deep on first down, down the sideline. And intercepted. Intended for Roddy White and picked off by Dominique Rogers Cromarty, the rookie from Tennessee State. Matt Ryan held it too long. Roddy White had a chance, but watch the play on the ball here. One of the great athletes ever to go through the combine. Ran like a 4-2-9-40. You could see the catch-up speed, but watch the vertical. I mean, he just went up and got that football. And for Matt Ryan, a huge mistake. They ran an out and up trying to take advantage of the rookie, but he <laughs> held the ball too long. He's going to keep it too, I think. No, he's going to throw it in the stands. A clear rookie mistake there. <laughs> yeah. You definitely want to save an interception from the playoffs. Second interception of the day, pitched by Matt Ryan, the rookie quarterback of the Falcons. Third turnover by Atlanta. And Adrian James back to work. The first two turnovers by the Falcons resulted in Arizona touchdowns, and now the third. Boy, I tell you, this Atlanta defense has to hold on now because you know there has to be a frustration level going. The Cardinals are sky high, and you're looking at a possible blowout here if they can put together another drive against the worn out defense. 157 yards. Today and last week, Edwin James is back. And just in time. Tail back in the eye as James gets the call, and this time the Falcons ready for him. Stop him at the line of scrimmage. First on the scene was Chris Houston. And I know certainly Edron James is motivated by the fact that they're in the playoffs and he wants to win a championship. But there is also a chip on his shoulder about the size of Cleveland out there because he is clearly upset with how he's been used. He wants to go somewhere else. He wants to run the ball more. And he has been frustrated and he's taking his frustration out on the Falcons tonight. Third down play. Warner backs away, changes the play perhaps. Play clock at three. Pumps once. Still looking downfield as he rolls to his right and tosses it away. Caught, caught by Rackers on the sideline. Nice catch. You say kickers don't have good hands? All the time. <laughs> for Kurt Warner, is a good understanding. He was out there. There yeah. was not a single receiver anywhere in sight, but outside the pocket, you throw it away and you take the punt. But Big moment in the game there for Atlanta's defense. We just talked about it. That could have been a huge momentum turn here. Still very much in it now. So the defense holds. It comes through, forces the punt by Graham. Douglas, the rookie, deep. Wow. Nearly blocked. Douglas says, get away from it, but it takes kind of a lateral bounce and will be downed inside the 15 yard line. Well, I thought if Troy Beerman, Beerman laid the out there, I think he might have gotten that one. Sometimes tough for a rookie to take that kind of a chance in a playoff game, but he gets through here clearly. And instead of laying out and making that block, he tried to pull off of it. I'm sure not wanting to make the huge mistake, but I'm not so sure if he lays out on that one. He doesn't get it. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, as it is, the Falcons will take over. Less than a minute to go in the third. Turner again and draws a crowd surrounded and taken down. I tell you, Bertrand Berry has just played a fantastic game today. He is staying in his post. He is staying backside. Here they're going to come with that old cutback play one more time. Uh uh. Bertrand Berry's not chasing anything. He has been a nightmare with his pass rush. And he is doing a fantastic job against the run on that backside tonight. 11th season from Notre Dame and the Arizona coach is preaching stay at home and they have today for the most part. Norwood gets the call to the 20 yard line as the final seconds tick away from the third quarter. Atlanta's glad to see it end. They lost a fumble. They went three and out three and out and an interception in the third quarter. And that'll do it. That's the end of the third quarter.
Arizona leading Atlanta 28 17. And NBC's NFL wildcard playoff continues after these messages from your local NBC station. True to form, Arizona good in the third quarter. They scored 14 to none for Atlanta, the best third quarter team in the NFL. Now third and six for the Falcons. Ryan in that third quarter was only two of six for seven yards and an interception. And this pass is too tall for his intended receiver, Michael Jenkins. And a punt will be upcoming. Well, after all the third downs that Matt Ryan was able to convert in the first half and the way he finished there, it has been a different story here. And really, it has been since the play by Darnell Dockett that caused fumble that yeah. you just, it seems to have unsettled the Falcons on offense. They just seem completely uncomfortable since that happened. Kanan in punt formation. Picks up the low snap and sends it to Breston, who calls a fair catch at his own 45 yard line. NBC's NFL wildcard playoffs brought to you by Chevy and American Revolution. By Vizio, America's HD TV company. To learn more, log on to Vizio.com. And by Wendy's. It's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Today's aerial coverage brought to you by Duracell. Tom Hammond, Chris Collinsworth, Tiki Barber. First NFL playoff game. It's the NFC wild card matchup, 4 5 matchup between Arizona and Atlanta. And Arizona leading 28 17 after a 14 0 third quarter. Hand off to Edron James. This is the formula as a flag comes flying in. This is the formula that's worked. For Arizona today, Edrin James, pound, 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 and then hit a big pass. Boy, wire on that tackle. Personal foul, face mask, number 50, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Remember, there's no incidental face mask anymore, so you have to grab and turn it, and there is no question about <laughs> that one. <laughs> Lucky his head's still on. That's Curtis Lofton, the rookie from Oklahoma. And this has not happened much to this team this year. Defense has committed only 14 penalties, and that is the fewest in the NFL. They don't allow big plays. They don't beat themselves. And so far today, well, let's give the offense a little credit after that fumble. That one's the one that sort of turned the tide here. 36-yard line for Arizona. Warner trying to set up a screen that appeared, but Atlanta had all kinds of penetration into the backfield, and that one did not look good from the start. J.J. Arrington on the reception from Kurt Warner. Chauncey Davis just about got there as soon as he did. Yeah, and Kendall Moorhead did as well. They just almost read that one out. And, and now for Arizona, you don't want to get too conservative with this thing. Remember, the Atlanta Falcons have a very explosive offense. You've got everything going your way. All you need probably is another 10 yards or so with a legitimate shot at the field goal. Don't rein it in now. You've made your living as an offensive unit. Keep firing. Blitz comes from Atlanta. Pass juggled and caught by Urban. But it only get a couple of yards out of it. The Atlanta Falcons have not been able to sack Kurt Warner today and John Abraham third best in the league has been controlled by the offensive line of the of the Cardinals and the quick release of Kurt Warner. Yeah, in fairness to John Abraham, he's been paid a lot of attention and there's Mike Gandy. It's his birthday today and so he's <laughs> gotten one of the best birthday presents ever if they can keep John Abraham off the sack charts. Yeah, Abraham had a birthday present planned for him. But so far it's still wrapped. <laughs> Warner on third and long sandwiched by the rush and then his intended receiver Breston fell down. Now every time that the Falcons need to play defensively they've dialed up this blitz trying to come from his backside there and it is hurried Kurt Warner. I thought that was what changed the first half when they quit sitting back and they started bringing pressure. So maybe they're going to try and get back to that package again here at least on third down. And that stop kept them out of field goal range and now they're going to have to punt. See quite a few slips on this field today as uh, Tiki reported earlier it was uh, 
Saad was changed out and brought in. Here's Finneran letting it bounce. There's a flag down. Took a great Arizona bounce. It'll be down at about the one yard line. And we'll check the penalty. I think one of the Falcons players on the gunner basically just tackled him, slung him to the ground. It was after the kick, so it just backed them up from here if that's what they called. It looks like it's going to be a hold against the Falcons. And still some confusion here. I think they're trying to figure out was it pre kick or post kick? Uh -huh. it was, it was, kick holding. Number 23, correction on the offense, kicking team. That penalty will be assessed at the end of the play. And there's the hold. We'll be right back. My nickname is Matty Ice. It started back when I was in high school. They tease you every once in a while about the nickname, but uh, for the most part, you know it's a good nickname when people really only start calling you that, and uh, that's been the case around the locker room. Well, they'll need to be Matty Ice now because pinned deep down in the fourth quarter. It's the third time today an Arizona punt has put Atlanta deep inside the 10. I think you need to go hard count here to slow down this pass rush a little bit. From his end zone, he will be able to get it off. No, no. No, nope, they say no. So That's a safety. safety. Good call. Antonio Smith, the first man to wrap him up. And in the grass called. In the end zone, two points on the safety. Well, almost a safety earlier, but this one was clearly in the grass. The official called it and for Matt Ryan you simply cannot hold the ball that long in the end zone that's a, a good call the by the officials After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct number 90 on the defense Arizona excessive celebration that penalty will be enforced on the safety we talked about it there before the snap you knew the Cardinals were going to be trying to rip off the ball they've been doing it the entire time and they were able to get it there. Kind of hard to blame anybody on defense for celebrating after the day that they've had. Yeah, well, okay, well, maybe that's too much. <laughs> I said, I've seen yep. enough of that. He gave him a couple of Buck and Bronco rides, but he said the third and fourth, that was too much. Are you surprised at the defense of the Cardinals today and how well they played. You know Tom it has been they have taken advantage of this crowd noise and all night long we have simply seen the Cardinals anticipating the snap count and Matt Ryan not doing enough with his snap count to try and slow him down a little bit early on they got him offside some they haven't done it here but that wasn't so much that case there it was really Matt Ryan holding the ball too long you're at a key point in the ball game. You have to be able to get rid of it and as great a year as he's had he's made some rookie mistakes here this afternoon. Cardinals hosting their first playoff game in 61 years 60 seasons and they've run off 16 straight points now to lead it 30 to 17. the free kick Kanan is going to punt punts it high toward Breston who fields it drops it picks it up again and turned around hit hard short of the 15 yard line and Mike Smith's had a rough afternoon in his first playoff game as a head coach Saturday continues next rivals collide.
Can Peyton Manning take the Colts back to the Super Bowl? Or will lightning strike for the surging Chargers? Wild Card Saturday continues, next only on NBC. Kenny Awebama was guilty of a penalty there as we went to break. Push in the back, cost him half the distance to the goal, so they'll be backed up. But you know, one of the stories of this game has to be the play of the defense of the Cardinals unexpectedly today. Yeah, no question. They've been sensational, but this is still a two touchdown game. Right. You know, so it's a long way from over, and now because a couple of those penalties have come about, now Arizona's backed up in a dangerous position. So now your playing calling has to be a little bit different. It's uh, not much of a surprise either. Shouldn't be anyway. I think that uh, Matt Ryan has had rookie moments today. He clearly has. And that was the worst of them that last play. Warner quick toss out to Fitzgerald. Makes a pretty good gain on first down of it before Foxworth grabs him by the ankles. And Arizona you know everybody said that they, they couldn't succeed against good teams they had a record of nine and seven they won the NFC West acknowledged as a weak division sort of limped into the playoffs didn't finish that well but they've looked like a, a completely different team here today it's been very impressive on both sides of the football and Ken Wisenhut is really clear about it he said our guys had a letdown you know they clinched so early and we have a bunch of young guys and they didn't know how to handle it and actually they got blown out in a couple of games after that but they seem to have pieced it back together. There's a first down run by Edrin James. Dragging Keith Brooking with him. And he looks like a different player as well. He really does. I mean, this has just been the Edrin James that they thought they got a few years back. And this is nothing but old fashioned power football. There's no tricky things going on here. This is an offensive line that has been much maligned for their inability to run block and they are just taking over this game at this point. 15 carries 73 yards for Edron James that's almost five yards a carry and if they can get the running there the whistle stops that play if they can get the running game going with the passing attack they have and three receivers over a thousand yards wow false start number 63 offense double clutch five yard penalty first down. I'll send line the center on the penalty. And not only has Edron James gained 73 yards, but a lot of them have come after he's been hit. Yeah, well, he is running like an angry man today. He <laughs> certainly is. And I'll tell you, you have to give a little credit to Todd Haley as well, the offensive coordinator, a guy that, that has made some great adjustments here. He has decided to stick with his running game, and it's worked. Kurt Warner's pass. Spock, the tight end. Todd Haley, the offensive coordinator, is trained under Bill Parcells. He said, you know, Kurt Warner is one of those guys, he gets bored. He always wants more stuff in. He's used to Mike Martz, who had 400 <laughs> plays on his play sheet. He said, but I was trained by Bill Parcells, who he would come in and ask me, how many plays do you have in the game plan? I'd say 50. And he'd say, well, get rid of 25 of them. <laughs> you know, so we're in a little conflict there. 110 yards to eight in this second half. From the eye, tailback spot, James wrapped up this time. And the yellow flags flies. That confrontation between Beerman and James went all the way to the sideline and then some. It's like a hold though on the Cardinals. 63 offense 10 yard penalty second down the send line called for a false start earlier and that time called for the hold and of course this is just the first of two on wild card Saturday coming up game two Peyton Manning in the Colts LT in the Chargers last word we had was LT said he was going to play the bridge show up next the Diet Pepsi Bridge Show will come up after this game before the start of the second game. The Colts and the Chargers. Big afternoon here of football on NBC, starting with the U.S. Army All American game and then two NFL wildcard games. Draw play Hightower. Run into his home man. 
It's like they have magnets in them. I don't keep running into their own men. Well, that was the, the most athletic play we've seen all day by an offensive lineman. Mike Gandy actually got out of the way of the running back <laughs> that time. Edron James probably thinking, oh, why didn't they do that for me? Here's Gandy on his birthday. Watch this. Uh-huh. Ole, Whoa. get out of the way. <laughs> nice play, Mike. And happy birthday. Need a stop right here, though, for Atlanta. They need two touchdowns to win this thing. And it's hard to imagine if they convert here, they're going to have too many more opportunities. On third and 12, the Atlanta defense looking for a big stop. Kirk Warner retreats, throws underneath. Fitzgerald tackled well short of the first down. And so the Atlanta defense does hold, thanks in part to a couple of penalties against the Cardinals. Stephen Nicholas on that tackle. All right, it's Matty Ice time now, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I mean, this is the rookie of the year. The running game isn't going, and so now you really don't have a whole lot of choice, but there is time. I mean, they do not have to get away from the running game with their game plan here. They can stay in this offense, one touchdown, and they're in good shape. Graham will punt to Douglas. Low punt. Douglas. Chance for a return. But good coverage by Arizona, taken down at about the 41 yard line. Special teams tackled by Matt Ware. Matty Ice takes over. Hey, Coach Mora, we're going to throw a playoffs party in my backyard. Big screen TV, lots of cold, refreshing Coors Light. You kidding me? No, we're even going to play touch football with the neighbors. <laughs> I don't care. Who you play? Coach, there's going to be girls at our party. You think we should talk to them about the playoffs? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. Playoffs? Frost Brew Coors Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL playoffs. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? OK, OK. Don't talk Forget about it. I brought it playoffs? up. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. I want to ask one question. You ready for Friday night? Brilliant. Breathtaking, extraordinary, the best is back. If you haven't seen it, what are you waiting for? Friday Night Lights returns January 16th on NBC. Matt Ryan facing the biggest moment of his pro career. His brother Mike is here to watch him. They call him Mots. The two of them were involved in a serious traffic accident when Mots and Matt were younger, that pass incomplete on first down. They were actually collided with a military fuel truck. And Mike, the older brother, had been a backup quarterback at Widener College in Pennsylvania. And his injuries in that crash were so severe that he was unable to continue as a quarterback. Desperately wanted to play football but could not continue. Matt was in the car with him and was not seriously injured. And for months he wondered why me why did I escape when my older brother whom I idolize had his career ended and it took a long time for him to get rid of the guilt and to be able to go on to have the great career he had at Boston College and now rookie of the year in the NFL that pass on the mark Finneran so dealing with the guilt of his brother's career having been ended while he was spared his brother here to watch him today along with Matt's parents Bernice and Mike Sr. And he's trying to pull one out for the Falcons. This talented rookie facing a third down. Ryan's pass knocked down intended for Jenkins and incomplete. Well, that time the Cardinals coming with a blitz of their own. They're going to send everybody off the left side here. And Matt Ryan really had a chance to step up into that throw. It's one of the few times a day I've seen him seem to be affected by the blitz. He faded away from that throw when there was really no reason to. His offensive line had it picked up. Roderick Hood's had a good day, too, for the uh, Cardinal defense as Mike Smith's going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and six. Seven minutes to go in the game. A little early for this, maybe. Ryan's pass caught out of the backfield. Norwood has a first down and more. Cuts back. Norwood inside the 30 down to the 25-yard line. Big 
play on fourth and six. Francisco chases him down, but not until Norwood has a 30 yard gain. Well, they came right back with the same blitz again, and that time. Matt Ryan stepped up and made the throw. He threw it simply over the top. They anticipated the blitz. Just a great call on that one by Mike Malarkey. First, first down of the half for the Falcons. Ryan back in rhythm, completes another one. And the tight end Peel draws a crowd. Slam down around the 20 yard line. And we've yet to see a run I think on this drive and due in large part to the fact that Michael Turner averaging just 2.3 yards per carry. Clearly the difference in this one has been the ability of the Cardinals to stop the run. Clock under six minutes. Ryan had a man open found him Jenkins close to the first down marker on forward progress looks like they'll mark it just short hood with another tackle. Matt Ryan doing a good job getting this ball out of his hands quickly. The Cardinals not playing prevent defense, but it's clearly not wanting to give up the big play. Ryan keeps it and picks up the first down. Now it's, less than five and a half to play. Yeah, and it's time to pick up the pace here a little bit. They're going to have to pick up the tempo now because you know on the other side of the ball is Kurt Warner, and they clearly have the ability to pick up some first downs. Once they get it back, so going back to the huddle here, a little surprising. Five minutes left. Three play. No. Flag is down. Ryan tossed it into the end zone where it was picked off, but the whistle had already blown the play dead. Offside. Number 92 defense unabated to the quarterback five yard penalty first down Bertrand Berry who has had a big game for the Arizona defense as well but we've seen it all day long yeah. they've been anticipating the snap uh -huh. count so occasionally you're going to give up one of these unfortunately there for Matt Ryan he thought he had a free play and if they had allowed it he had a free shot at the end zone they blew it dead trying to protect the quarterback ball now at the 10 yard line. Drop and a quick toss. Good for five yards to White. Close to the first down. We'll see where they spot it. Again, just getting it out of their hands quickly. The cornerbacks are playing off of these receivers and they're just allowing the underneath plays, obviously trying to allow a little clock to run down here. Again, the Falcons back in the huddle. And it is enough for the first down. So first and goal, Falcons. Stand up, toss it in the flat for the touchdown to White. White and Wilson with a little jawing afterwards. But Matt Ryan just raising up, tossing it to White, took it into the end zone. How about with that? 415. How about that drive by Matty Ice there? there Not a go. single run on the entire play, on the entire drive, and he takes them the length of the field. Again, I don't understand exactly why the Cardinals are playing their cornerbacks back in the end zone when they're on the five yard line they just gave up a cheap touchdown. Mason Elam. Extra point is good. Touchdown for Roddy White who's had a big season. Mike Ryan Matty's older brother applauds as they pull within six. Six point game with 415 left Arizona takes over and the last time they came off the field after their drive here's what Todd Haley the offensive coordinator said to them. So Todd Haley saying the game was in their hands. The offense about to get the football here. Canaan's kickoff. Arrington out of the end zone. Decked at the 20 yard line where they will begin. 
And Sunday, January 11th, the party of the year is back and bigger than ever. All the stars of TV and movies let loose at the Golden Globes. That's January 11th on NBC. Tom, you hear all the time about the four-minute offense, and we have four minutes and ten <laughs> seconds here, and this is exactly what it is. You have the ball on offense. You want to be able to grind out the remainder of the clock and not give it back to the Atlanta Falcons. Usually running teams are more successful with it. Do they have that kind of faith in their running game here to stay with it? But how many times has Kurt Warner been in this situation? Super Bowl MVP and league MVP. He's going to toss, and it's a dangerous one. But there's the sure-handed Fitzgerald to latch on to it. A gain of 15 and a first down before he's tackled by Chris Houston. That was a great route that time by Larry Fitzgerald. He made it look like it was going to be a post-corner route. And just at the top of it, he stops and comes back to the football. Perfectly run route, and you can see the confidence that Kurt Warner has releasing that ball well before he came out of the break. Perfect timing. And the Cardinals continue to play without Bolden, who strained a hamstring, their 1,000-yard receiver. Fitzgerald with six receptions, 101 yards, and a touchdown today. Toss this one to Edrin James. James looking for a block, can't get one. Does manage to stay in bounds as he's collapsed by Brooking over on the sideline, close to it, but not out of bounds. That was that formation that they've been using those pick plays on all day, and that time instead they tried to go with the pitch to the outside. Nice play defensively. And timeout taken by the Falcons with 3.18 on the clock. And you could see Todd Haley going over to Ken Wisenhunt. This is that time in the game as an offensive coordinator. You want permission to make a few calls. If you're going to go over there <laughs> and you're going to make a call, you want to run it by the head coach first and make sure he's okay with it. And of course, a lot more NFL playoff action to come. We'll be going to the Diet Pepsi Bridge Show next, and then after that, the Colts and the Chargers. Ryan just hoping for a chance here. Play action fake, and Warner with time, and a receiver. Caught by Breston. Breston to the 40 yard line. Lawyer Malloy stopped him, but not until he had 25 big yards into Falcon territory. One of the great things about having a Larry Fitzgerald on your team, this time he clears out, he draws all the attention. Breston comes across the field, and the protection once again is there. This play takes a long time to develop, and for Kurt Warner, he had all the time he needed. Huge play in the ballgame. And Mike Gandy, the birthday boy, well, has taken care of John Abraham today. He couldn't have a better birthday present than what he has done to the sack leader of the Falcons. And off the hot tower. Spinning his way and free for the moment. Finally collapsed by Lofton, but had a couple of extra yards on the end of that run, and the clock advances to 221. That was a nice play that time by Curtis Lofton. That one looked like it was going to get around the corner, but he flashed his speed. Timeout Atlanta. For John Abraham, this has not been the best of days. Has he been getting some added attention? Yeah, but he also has seen a lot of one-on-one -on -one blocks. And these two tackles have done the job. They've tried them on the left side. They've tried them on the right side. You can see they're not chipping. They're not leaving the tight end. This is just superior play out there by Levi Brown, by Mike Gandy. And it really has been one of the differences in this game. This offensive line, they've been known as pass protectors. And nobody in the league has had to pass protect more this season than these guys have. But today, against one of the best, Got it done. One tackle all day for John Abraham. That is amazing. And he was sort of licking his chops going against the birthday man, Mike Gandy. Didn't run it pan out that way. Here is an end oh, around that's a disaster. Goodness. Preston. There's Abraham just when we were saying, where has he been all day? He makes a huge play. What about this call, though? Uh, it's bizarre. Now, I will say that there are a lot of coaches that will tell you 
that this is the point in the field where indeed you will take a shot like that you do you want to do a trick play you want to do it right around the midfield area but boy oh boy that was that was a big one there so now unless the Falcons have a real letdown here they are going to get the football back with plenty of time they will not have any timeouts they'll get the stoppage at the two minute warning that last play lost eight yards mm -hmm. well, I hope he got permission on that call <laughs> <laughs> so now all the way back to the 46 yard line third down and very long. Warner wide open in the center of the field has spot the tight end. He was absolutely wide open and he has it 22 yards and a big big first down. Whoa. <laughs> Watch the linebackers inside for the Atlanta Falcons for whatever reason they jump up the veteran Keith Brooking a terrible mistake. It was third down and a mile, and Keith Brooking jumps the underneath route. What is he doing out there? Two-minute warning. History is made. Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band take the field live for their first Super Bowl performance ever. Don't miss the Bridgestone Super Bowl 43 halftime show featuring Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, February 1st, only on NBC. going against a, a team with a really good offense, so might be a high-scoring game. It's probably going to come down to the last possession. Well, it could come down to the last possession, but the Cardinals just made a huge play to pick up a first down with two minutes left. It went to Spock, who has three receptions all this half. Well, for Keith Brooking and Curtis Lofton right here, for some reason they come here. Look where they had to get for that first down. Why would you jump anything underneath? You don't care if that back catches the ball. The only thing in that defense you care about is a tight end running down the middle, and that was a gift. Steven Spock, the tight end in his third year from Fresno State. Clutch grab as he came wide open in the middle, and with no timeouts for the Falcons left, Kurt Warner will take a knee. And how special is this? For the people of Arizona, for the fans of the Cardinals, what has it been, 60 seasons since they've had a home playoff game? Since 1947 when they played in Comiskey Park, and at, they actually won the NFL championship that year, 1947, as they had hosted their last playoff game before this one. They went all during their time in St. Louis, all during their time here in Arizona till today without hosting a playoff game. And here they are in the victory formation and about to move on in the playoffs. Steven Spock had two receptions all season long. He had three, none bigger than that last one to give the Cardinals the first down and eventually victory as the clock continues to tick away. Well, for John Abraham, it's been a tough day, but I hope they have a lot of game balls out there because this offensive and defensive line were tremendous. Won't know who their next opponent will be until tomorrow's game is played. But if they play the Panthers, Carolina's beaten them five straight. Oh, and here's. <laughs> uh oh. Uh huh. There we go. Now you got the diversionary tactics. The player in front getting his attention. Now yeah. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and as the fans watch it, they applaud here too. As Wizenhunt gets the cold shower. 
And the Arizona Cardinals will advance in this 4-5 NFC wild card matchup. They defeated the Atlanta Falcons despite trailing at halftime. They had the big third quarters they'd had all year long. They let Atlanta close within six here in the fourth. But the big reception, Kurt Warner to Steven Spock on third and 16, gave them a first down and able to clinch the victory. Kurt Warner back in the playoffs for the first time since 2002. Savers the victory and has the big smile to prove it. Right, Tiki? Kurt, this was a big day for you guys. You thought you couldn't run the ball against the game, this, these teams. You ran very effectively in the first half and also in the second half. How big was that in helping you guys get this win? Well, you know it's always huge in the playoffs, and I think they came in saying, hey, we got to stop their passing game, make them run on us, and the guys up front, Edge did a tremendous job running the football today, and it was a huge key. You told us a couple of days ago, you didn't know if your teammates thought that they could win this game or win going forward. What do you think now? Well, I hope this gives us a lot of confidence. I knew we believed we could win this game. I hopefully we can parlay this into some more confidence where we believe we can go wherever we have to go and win. This was this one, you know, you guys got to go on the road. You get a little bit of home field advantage. If you get some conditions on the road, do you think you guys can adjust to it? Well, I hope so. We're going to have to. You know, that's the bottom line is that, you know, in the playoffs, you got to go on the road. You got to win wherever they put you. And we're going to have to step up no matter what the conditions and play well. Kurt Warner, congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Tom back to you. Kurt passed for 271 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Edron James gained 73 yards, averaging nearly five yards a carry. Fitzgerald with six receptions as it's 30-24 Arizona wins. Coming up next, it's the Diet Pepsi Fritz Show. Then catch game two of NBC's wild card doubleheader as Peyton Manning and the Colts take on LaDainian Tomlinson and the Chargers. That's all coming up next only on NBC. Big win for the Arizona Cardinals and a long time coming. For Chris Collinsworth and Tiki Barber, Tom Haven saying so long from Arizona. You're watching the NFL Wild Card Playoffs on NBC. Look. Special edition of Football Night in America, presented by Diet Pepsi, the official soft drink of the NFL. Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego, where tonight two of the hottest teams heading into the postseason are set to clash. The Indianapolis Colts, winners of nine straight against the San Diego Chargers, who had to win their final four just to make the playoffs. Earlier this week, Peyton Manning was named NFL MVP for the third time in his career, although today the headlines out of San Diego have focused on LaDainian Tomlinson. Some reports say he has been diagnosed with a detached tendon in the groin area, though he is out on the field and he does look ready to at least try to go tonight for the Chargers. We rejoin you once again from New York, and the lads are prepared with their tribute to Stephen Spock. Live long and prosper, Stephen. <laughs> or at least you the next round. Well. Yeah. Yes. Vulcans everywhere <laughs> rejoice. Warner hits Spock with the clutch reception. And the Cardinals, who hadn't beaten anybody very good, basically they thrived in their own division. They were 3-7 and seven against the rest of the league. They did it. They came out and played outstanding. They threw that Vulcan mind meld on them at the end of the game. <laughs> I just thought um, as this game went on, the Cardinal defense really took over. And uh, Bussy and I were talking about this as the game was, was unwinding. They had something on that offensive line because they were getting off the ball as quick as I've seen them get off. You, all you year. think they had keys and knew what was There's coming? No question. I mean, you play the game long enough, you see that stuff. They're they're getting off the ball outstanding. And, and I like Ken Winsor. What he did with this football team, you got to understand, he came in with a mindset. He said, hey, we're going to be a physical football team. We understand we throw the football, but in the playoffs. Now, I think he really learned this when we won the Super Bowl uh, back a couple years ago. You have to run the football in the playoffs to win playoff games. And I, I really think he dusted off oh, Edron James, and he said, hey, we're going to ride your back all the way through the playoffs. Now, I understand this is only one game, but this is a big game for them because they hadn't been able to run the football, hadn't been able to defend the run. So this this was huge for this football team. They, they even let Tim Hightower get in the game. He got a touchdown. So this was big for those guys. Yeah, the other half of that is the defense. We said in the front end of it that they're going to have to step up, and they did. I mean, they got off the ball. They controlled the line of scrimmage. We also said that they had to be able for their secondary to play well, and you can see they got after them up front, and they had great coverage down the field. I thought it was outstanding all the way around for the uh, for the Cardinal defense. 
Kurt Warner wasn't sacked a single time. That Amazing. means they held yeah. John Abraham, you one of the it. league's best, in check. You talk about the ground game of the Cardinals. Edron James himself was saying, I didn't come here to be an offensive lineman. They got to give me the ball. <laughs> who would have bet that Edron James would have 73 yards? Michael Turner, who had almost 1,700 for the year, would have 42, less than two and a half yards per carry. So, I saw your Wilson, and, and you <laughs> raised me. Exactly. You, 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 <laughs> In the pregame, I said that they had to stop Turner. They stopped Turner. They, they win the football game. So I, I think I may be a psychic. No, no you're a psychic. You're a psycho. I would go you are. You're not a psychic. <laughs> I'm go the psychic. Go back to that part. Uh, Edron James, it looks like he's playing for another contract with another team, but who would have thought that they would have a running game like this? 73 yards. He had 100 yards the previous week, and after the game, Tiki Barber caught up with the Cardinal running back. It's been a frustrating year for you. You haven't run the ball very effectively or that much. You got benched early in the year. How gratifying was it for you to have such a big day in a playoff game? Well, you know, it's never the way you start. It's the way you finish. You know, I take this all day to be able to be in the playoffs and win, especially being around here is something they haven't done in a long time. So if that's the sacrifice I got to make, I'll take that all day. Did you guys know that you were going to commit so much to running the ball today? Well, we knew that they were going to try to stop our passing game, so we knew if, if we wanted to make sure, keep them off balance, we had to be able to run the ball. And, you know, anytime you give us an opportunity, we're going to take advantage of that. It's been 60 seasons since the Arizona Cardinals have played a home playoff game. You guys play one, you get a big win. How much does this mean to this organization and to this team? I think it's hard to explain because this organization you know, has been through so much for so many years, and finally they get a chance to win a playoff game. So I'm quite sure it's going to be a bunch of tears from the owners and everybody on the inside. I appreciate it. Congrats. All right, thank you, Hi, thank you Tiki. Uh, if you look at Edron James now and this style and what we saw today, is this what the Cardinals are going to expect to see defensively, that they're going to say, go ahead, let's see if you can run the football game? Absolutely, us. because you know that this passing game can't beat you. And so I really believe if Edron can continue to do this, this will be the team that everybody's talking about in the playoffs because they can go as far as Kurt Warner throwing the football, but now Edron James, his legs can lead him the way well, to Well, speaking of legs, Ladanian Tomlinson, we're curious about how healthy he is. Kind of speaking about legs, but we'll leave that detail to your imagination. Earlier today, there were multiple reports saying that Tomlinson's groin injury was worse than previously known, that he'd been diagnosed with a detached tendon connecting a groin muscle to bone. Then we saw Tomlinson walk into Qualcomm Stadium and warm up, though he was not at game speed. After the warm up, Andrea Kramer spoke with the Chargers coach, Norv Turner, about his star running back's status. LaDainian Tomlinson warmed up for about 15 minutes. What did you see that made you confident that he could go tonight? Well, it's never what you see. Uh, LT felt good about it. Uh, he's felt better each day uh, throughout the week, and, uh, you know, he's ready to go. How will you manage LT during the game? Well, we're going to give him the ball, and we're going to let him go. And uh, uh, if he needs to come out, he'll come out. And obviously, we're very confident in Darren Sproles. There's also Antonio Gates, who's been nursing a high ankle sprain. He is active. How effective, though, do you think he can be? Uh, Antonio actually feels very good. Uh, I expect him to be full speed, and we need him. We need Antonio to work the middle of the field. Uh, he'll help our wide receivers in our running game. All right, Norv, thanks very much. Okay. Andrea Kramer with North Turner. Bus, you've had that injury before. Does this all add up? Does this look like he has that injury now? Well, you know, I'm not sure if he has this, this exact injury that I had because if you have the injury that I had, you will not be able to play. He, he warmed up. He seems as though he's going to be ready to go. We won't know, but if it is the same injury, he won't be effective. But in he this won't even game. address this. Andrew yeah. Kramer talked. Why wouldn't you? Is he just saying, I don't want to say anything about this until after the game? Well, he's trying to deal with the fact that, you know what, he's not at 100%, and he wants to play in this football game. So you don't want to tip off the defense and let them know that you're not going to be effective in the football game. He's just tougher than you. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find out. Al Michaels and John Madden are in San Diego. Al, historically, the Chargers have had tremendous success against the Colts, but it'll be very tough if LT can't contribute. Yeah, the irony is, too, that until last week, LT didn't really feel like he was his old self, but then he said he was very healthy going into the Denver game, a game they had to win. We're going to go back and take a look at what happened here last Sunday night. He scores his third touchdown of the game, but it comes with a big price because that is where he hurt himself. Then a few minutes later, he comes back, and on his very next play, you can see he cannot make the cut. We heard John Norv Turner talking to Andrea. What do you expect from LT tonight? You know, I don't. I don't think the key is can he play. I mean, obviously he's dressed, and uh, I watched him in the pregame warmup, and he didn't make any cuts or anything. So, just like Norv Turner says, you, you really don't know. It has to be up to him. And 
I question one how effective he will be. I mean, that's what Bush just said. You know, you can play, but can you play effectively? We're talking about playoff football here, and then how long can you play? I mean, these games are awfully, always, always tight. They always come down to the fourth quarter. Can he be there and be effective in the fourth quarter? I think that's the biggest question. If he can't go, at least the guy who backs him up, Darren Sproles, who would assume more of the burden tonight, is coming off a phenomenal game, as you guys recall, last Sunday night. See you in about a half hour. All right, guys, we shall see. There are, as we switch subjects here, five deserving nominees for the Diet Pepsi Rookie of the Year Award. Here they are. Diet Pepsi is proud to present the nominees for Diet Pepsi Rookie of the Year. Choice one, Ravens quarterback Joe Flacco led Baltimore to 11 wins and a trip to the playoffs. Choice two, Bears running back Matt Forte broke Gale Sayers' franchise rookie record for total yards and led Chicago in rushing and receptions. Choice three, the Titans dynamic Chris Johnson led Tennessee in rushing and was fourth in the NFL in yards per carry. Choice four, Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan joined Peyton Manning as the only rookies in NFL history to throw for 3,000 yards. He lives in Atlanta. And choice five, Houston Steve Slayton led all rookies and set a Texans franchise record with 1,282 rushing yards. Earned on the gridiron, decided by you. Vote now on NFL.com slash rookies for the 2008 NFL Diet Pepsi Rookie of the Year. Congratulations. And remember, saving money at Geico.com, so easy a caveman can do it. It's been quite a football year full of great football plays that led to great football highlights, and we thought we'd give them all to you here uh, just in our last opportunity. In less here, than uh, three minutes here. Okay. This is the 15th play of the season for the Patriots. Final one for Tom Brady, down and out. So were the Patriots by season's end. ACL, MCL tear. Also in week one, the debut of Matt Ryan, whose season is now over. This was his first pass of the year to Michael Jenkins for the touchdown. Chargers, Broncos, the Ed Hockley call. The play should have been ruled a fumble. By rule, the ball was dead when it hits the ground because the whistle was blown. The ruling on the field stands. It's third down. Cutler hit Eddie Royal for the touchdown. Then the two-point conversion as Denver wins it. In week three, what happened in the AFC East? The Dolphins at the Patriots. The Wildcat kills the Pats. Ronnie Brown lined up as QB on six plays. Results four touchdowns. Three on the ground, one through the air, which he threw. Dolphins 38, uh, Patriots 13. And then we see Ronnie do his Cheshire Cat impression right there. Week six, Cowboys Cardinals overtime. And Sean Morey blocked. Monty Beisel recovers. Cardinals win it 30-24. Ahead to week 11, the Jets at the Pats. The Pats are down by seven, but then Castle to Randy Moss. Maybe the touchdown catch of the year and the overtime decision to the Jets. Chargers, Steelers, and pretty much a microcosm of why this guy is going to the Pro Bowl. Troy Palomalo, full extension, the pick of Phillip Rivers. Now the Eagles and the Bengals in the Do You Know Your Football Rules game. It ends in an OT tie. Donovan McNabb did not know the with ties. I've never been a part of a tie. Uh, never even knew that that was in the rule. Donovan did know who his backup was, and it's Ed Reed who says, hey, Slappy, to Kevin Cobb. And he takes it 107 yards for the touchdown as he came in relief of Donovan McNabb. Well, at least there was no overtime. The Ravens, the next week, had their way with the Bengals. Everybody else did. A little fun. Mark Clayton looking up top to Derek Mason for the touchdown. Steelers Ravens under a minute to go. Pittsburgh trailing 9 6. Santonio Holmes, did he get in? The ruling on the field, no. The replay assistant went under the hood. It's not a game of inches, it's a game of pixels. Steelers win it 13 9. And the Giants and Vikings in week 17 win and in for Minnesota. Adrian Peterson made it both. The Vikes won 20 19. Panthers Saints. And one final chance for Drew Brees to break Dan Marino's single season passing mark. And it's incomplete. So was the Saints season. Speaking of breaking, could this have been the last play for Brett Favre in the NFL? The Dolphins and the Jets, it ends in an illegal forward pass. The Jets lost and everybody got fired. Cowboys Eagles, awful day for Tony Romo and Romo sack. He's stripped. Brian Dawkins, Chris Clemens, Clarence Clemens could have taken it back. <laughs> Eagles go on to win this one by the final of 44 to 6. There is your season in review.
And there you have it. And now, for a session that will be all too brief, here is Peter King with an observation about teams that may be looking for a head coach. Maybe they shouldn't be impatient. Maybe they should wait a year. Bob, I talked to Mike Shanahan last night. One of the things he told me is unless there's a perfect situation this year, 2009, which neither of us foresee, He's going to wait until 2010, which could lead to four of the 20 winningest coaches of all time. Mike Holmgren, Mike Shanahan, Bill Cowher, Tony Dungy, all being available to coach or to be general managers at the start of 2010. Could be the best season to go job prospecting ever. And look for Jerry Jones and Dan Snyder in Dallas and Washington to jump on two of these guys. Uh, Keith now going to tell you about a special event coming up in conjunction with the Super Bowl in Tampa. Yes, Bob, get ready for the biggest event ever to hit Super Bowl 43. It's the NBC Monstrous 3D event featuring monsters versus aliens. Yes, just pick up your free pair of Intel Intrude 3D glasses at the Sobe Life Water and Pepsi displays at your favorite retailer. And then, right before halftime, put on your glasses and catch the first ever Intrude 3D trailer to premiere during the Super Bowl. It's a sneak peek of DreamWorks' new comedy comedy monsters versus aliens in 3D like you've never seen it before. Hang on to your glasses and watch the brand new Sobe Life Water commercial featuring the return of the Sobe Lizards in 3D. So don't miss out. Go pick up your free Intrude 3D glasses. Bus has mine. Put them down. <laughs> Tune in NBC. Get ready for some monstrous 3D fun during Super Bowl 43. And don't chuck <laughs> those don't. glasses because Monday night NBC will air a special 3D episode of Chuck. It's a monstrous 3D week only on NBC. Nice. Yeah, very nice. As you can see, not only are they That's functional, not only are they functional, they're extremely attractive. Faith Hill has a Saturday night special, and it's Alan John, Colts no. Chargers next. See you no. at halftime. No. This has been a special edition of Football Night in America, presented by Diet Pepsi, the official soft drink of the NFL.